Hey guys, Socket here, and today we are joined by Carvrusco, Nugi, Octavian, and Rise, and we're going to be talking all things uh, betrayal, incursion, bestuary, and delve, since we have the first week impressions. Uh, before we get into it, though, what has everyone been up to, league-wise and everything? Rise, what have you been up to? As always, I've been racing for 100. As always, I died. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I haven't really... Well, okay, I've played two brand builds. One was Armageddon brand, and then I switched to uh, what's the name of it? Star Storm brand. Both skills really fun. Actually, the the most fun I would say. It's probably people always ask me like, what's the most fun build? I always say, well, the build I'm playing right now. Otherwise, if something else is more fun, I'd be playing that. I'm playing Cold Snap right now. I I, I kind of feel like playing Storm brands again. I'll be honest, that's just really <laughs> fun. There's just something about it that uh, really works well for me. In a way, I realized that it's, uh, well, I guess we'll be talking about it later, but just to preface it, it's like uh, all I've ever wanted. The um, Diablo 3 infected swarm, whatever it is, ability, but in PoE. But it doesn't quite work like that, but kind of. Locust swarm, that's the one. So yeah, I don't know. We got to level 98. I died 5% before 99. The curse of 98 continues. It seems like I always either die at 98 or I make it to 100. Who's good? Or die before, of course. I have to. A lot. 99 is the blessed level, man. Yeah, I think so too. Only Uber Elite dies at 99. I don't think anybody else does. He's done it like, what? Four or five times now, so... I haven't died at 99 yet. I was hoping that this is going to be the first one. But either way, the race, the race for me was over because Octavian got to 100. Was pretty much getting to 100 like that hour. So, not not um, me. But no. Wait, why did I say Octavian? You, you said Octavian. <laughs> blown up on my screen. Like Discord does this <laughs> thing where it's just huge, and I'm just like getting overwhelmed over here. No, it was uh, Oscar, not Octavian. Sorry. Congrats to Oscar, by the way. Great run from him, even though he delved to 100. God damn it. So, I mean, Octavian been, slash um, Oscar, what have you been doing then, sir? Um, speaking of Delve, I've put a lot of focus onto that earlier. Um, but I've been playing a Cold Snap Vortex Occultist, which is a very popular build because of all the changes to cold damage over time. And it's been going really well. It was a solid league starter with the Syndicate Craft for plus one to socketed AoE gems on helmet or gloves. You can, like, scale up to red maps on a four link because the base damage in Vortex is just so high. Um, and then, you know, with a with a five or six length shaper and even uber elder as possible, I brought them both down pretty early. Um, and then after that, I've been focusing on delving. I've gotten the floor 300 something, 340 or so. And they've like, I'm almost certain, obviously a fairly small sample size, a few days into the league, maybe a weekend, but I'm fairly certain they've upped spawn rates of both cities and bosses because I've seen two vol bosses and an all already and like 12 cities. I think they said that, no? That they're upping, like, everything? Yeah, it's just... They did How They did say down? they were going to. Uh, floor 350. And I've gone horizontal for, like, half a day. So not very far horizontal yet. Um, but, like, it's it's way more. Like, I'm seeing as many cities now at this depth as I saw at, like, depth five 600 last league. So Delve is very much worth the investment, especially considering a polished Sulfite Scarab gives you, like, 10,000 fuel by itself a lot of the time. How much are you paying per step right now? Uh, about, I think like seven fifty to eight fifty, somewhere in that. I I don't know exactly. I've not. So you run like one map and you can go like twelve down, or twelve yeah. steps. Yeah. Well, horizontally at this point, it's not the price isn't going up. So yeah, it's probably going to stay pretty consistent because it seems like this floor is perfectly fine to keep going at. Hmm? So and you don't have like any goals sulfite... to keep going down then, or are you just going to just stay three fifty? Um, on this build, it's starting to get to the point where pushing down is difficult because I don't have corpse just and that's really tough in deeper delves. Um, but I'm probably going to make another build to reach 600 because that's an end game grind challenge. I don't know if I'm going to go any further than that though. Hmm. Just out of interest, then what delve has everyone else gone to? Because I'm guessing no one else has really like pushed it. I'm only at like 150, 160 or something. I'm on, well, I'm on zero now. 
Oh, no, no, it does transfer. Never mind. Because when you migrate from SSF to the normal league, which I did, it doesn't, by the way, PSA, it doesn't actually move your Atlas or your Unveiled mods. So if you've got those and you want to move, just be careful because it doesn't work. And for ah. some people, it also doesn't move the Delve. Look, you screaming. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, that's considering <laughs> that's... moving, I have, I've unlocked everything. I've worked so hard for it. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Oh. It actually doesn't work, and the delves sometimes don't work for some people either. But for me, it worked, and I'm on like two sixty-five, I think. What about Yikes. you two? I'm at like one eighty. Probably would be a bit deeper if I hadn't died two times, because getting back to maps takes a takes a while, and that's a lot of time lost. But yeah, I, about the cities, I've definitely. It feels like they spawn more often. I've seen two cities. I haven't seen any bosses, but like the moment I reached like the level 77 zones, I had like two cities immediately. No, I think I got my first city. I think I got the first city at like 80 or something depth level. I don't think I even like got past depth 100 before I started seeing them. So I think they definitely like, made of, that a bit better. It's kind I of skipping like forwards a little bit, but I just want to briefly mention that with the spawn rate of cities at this depth, and with how insane like pure breach stones are, I don't know if any of you guys have run any of those, and like all the layers of investment you can make into maps, it's become very trivial this league to sustain high tier maps once you get there. So I mm -hmm. think we might see another harbinger where maps just get insanely cheap because they've been doing nothing but dropping in price since the start of the league. Which I realize most of you guys are playing in private league or solo self found in order <laughs> to avoid that, but it is still a worthwhile topic to mention. I mean, in Solar Cell Fund, you're just going to end up with, like, infinite 16 maps. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Once you get your Delve chart deep enough, yeah. and if you ever get, like, a rank 3 it that fled in research, then you're good. Yeah. Damn, you guys are popping off over here. I've seen two cities, despite being... I, the only reason why I'm on 260 was because I was going to the side pretty much, like, for the longest time, for multiple days now. And I've I've seen, like, two cities. And as for maps, I've barely now stopped running yellow maps while being on 98. Like, I, I just could not get maps no matter what. So, <laughs> you guys are really popping off over here. I don't know. I, I think mean, it's not like I have a lot of maps, right? I, yeah. It's just, I can see that because I've been running a lot of betrayal. I've been doing a lot of the setting up for it. Mm -hmm. Once you have, like, once the betrayal starts popping, the delve starts popping, the alva. And like just everything combined, I'm telling you, you're just gonna be flooded eventually. Because you're gonna have like one map that just drops you 50 maps. If it you it feels like it should. I don't know. It just hasn't happened for me. But it definitely feels yeah. like it should. It should be like that. It's it takes a lot of work. Especially considering that Delve is, you know, similar to your Atlas in that it's a permanent investment that you make that stays oh. good once it's done. So like, there's more setup. There's setup to the Atlas. There's setup to the Delve. But once you get all that set up, it's just really, really rewarding. I also think that the early Atlas is a lot more RNG now, like the way you progress. The fact that you can do a Syndicate and have it drop like a tier 14 map. Like day one, uh, a few people in my private league got like random reds drop. And then it's like Paul Harvey's and then getting like Shapers day one, shape day two, private league stuff. Yeah. So it's just like, if you're one of the people who's lucky to get that red early, and then you get Zana in that red, you're, like, you're set. And it seems like the way people like set up early Atlas is a lot more RNG than it was last week. I don't know if you guys would agree with that. I agree. Like in general, it seems a lot better to just go up as fast as possible and then everything else just kind of fills in. And I mean, that's what I did and it all filled in like pretty much perfectly. Like obviously I wanted to keep it even like on mm -hmm. the on the corners just so I don't get like stuck in one spot and then I have to catch up through just RNG. But uh, yeah, just running my highest map was super effective. So yeah, you either get lucky with that or you get completely fucked over. <laughs> and like, go ahead, Carve. It was all. It was. It was better to do it before too. Now it's just even more easy because there's just hmm. there's no way you can't get your maps because now the three to one is giving you the both maps too. From like the previously you only get one map and now you can get both. So. It's even even easier to do now. Just you get a map. It's a higher map than your previous one. You just all get and go and good to go, and then you get the random syndicate to bump you into shaper for no reason. Yeah, from like the wide maps. Yeah, but you can actually get like a guardian map from them. 
yeah. we got in the we got into 15 from like the five map and then we just <laughs> we just we just like put like three scarabs into it and sextants and everything and then not not sextants so uh, like just like choose it up as much as we could and we just got like guardian from there and i just Damn. finished the shaper so oh what about uh <laughs> what about your elva that first elva if you had any elva within those maps the first elva should be like Super high as well, right? Yeah, because oh, yeah. um, tempo level is really yeah. in scaling it up. Yeah. See, what uh, syndicate up. like hideouts are super generous in scaling upwards as well. Like yeah. they yeah. they tag. I I don't know if the math is the same as temples. It honestly seems even more generous, probably because you do a larger number of maps to make a safe house, like a much larger number than in terms of temples, because you can get intel on all four branches. Um. And the mobs leading up to it have decent-ish drop rates. There's a lot. There's a decent large number of them, and I've gotten a map like every second or third safe house run. To uh, backtrack just a little bit before we get into the full like syndicate and Atlas talk, though, uh, going back to like people's league starters and skill kind of stuff. So we had Rise do brands, um, and you're doing a cold snap character now, right? Rise, you muted. You're muted, Rise. Muted, Rise. God damn it. <laughs> I use my keybind to from the stream to unmute. Yeah, I'm doing cold snap and I'm trying to do the whole like soul catcher EB uh you know permanent vol cold snap thing. But it's been pretty surprising too because vortex is fucking crazy. <laughs> <Added it. laughs> like uh, vortex is insane, man. I had it on like a no link you know just in a plus 1 and it was killing everything. It was nuts. Vortex yeah. is really good. I league started on Vortex Cold Snap and I took a four link Vortex to uh, tier 14 maps. And I was like, yeah. this is pretty mm -hmm. good. This is this is like a pretty solid league start. Um, Carl, I think you're the only guy who hasn't tried the new cold damage over time stuff now. Yeah, I, I wanted to be like non meta slave. So instead, I went to the old meta, which was like Arc. Yeah. Because we wanted to, like, we're playing in private league with like 10 people and we wanted like a boss killer. So we can like farm Uber Elder and all that. So I just went uh sub other arc. Uh probably gonna go low life at some point. And then just later when we got some gear for other builds, kind of dealer. I really wanna do there's like three different cast and crit builds I wanna do. So yeah, there's we don't have items for that yet. Need a cost prison, the uh the shield, Lyco. There's one guy in my private league. I've got a private league of about it's like 90 people are in it, but realistically, there's like 30, 40 of us who play super regularly. And Zai, if you're in chat, hard carry. He was like, I'm just going to go Sabotar Arc Mines. And he got his Uber Elder, like, end of day two, day three. And everyone's just be like, Zai, you got any uh, maps I can yoink real quick? Because <laughs> everyone else did, like, really meme -y shit. And there's just this one guy who's just like, no, I own the entire economy. Let's go. Um, yeah. But I think we can probably all agree that they did a really good job this time round with the new skills aside from steel skills which we can complain about later but it seems like everyone who league started brands cold damage over time is like super happy and then anyone who league started steel skills is slightly less happy contrary to our, our previous um bay class episode ragging on it as well i've actually heard good reviews in my chat of tectonic people who are playing it and enjoying it hmm. So I'm considering trying to buy up a Helm Enchant for cheap on a decent base and running uh, running some text land myself. Yeah, I've I've heard that as well. A lot of people have been saying that the base, like non-upgraded Tectonic Slam AoE, is apparently as big as old Earthquake. And oh, it, what? Yeah, oh, okay. it's, that's good. <laughs> that's like the whole screen. Why? <laughs> I I've seen a few people playing it. Like all the footage I've seen of Tectonic Slam gameplay, I've been like, that's really big AoE. So, I don't. Do you guys think Vortex had an AoE increase? Did it? Because a lot of people say that, but I don't think. I so. think it it's got the, a little bit. No. Like a little, like a little, thing, little right? bit. I mean, same to be thing. fair, I'm wearing the new carcass jack, so that might just yeah. be the maker. Yeah. yeah. But like, I've heard that so much, and it's yeah, the people get this like, wow, this is so much more AoE. It feels like uh, I even saw people talk about Earthquake. Where, like people have this idea that all these skills have such a tiny AOE, but they really don't. It's just that it's, it's smaller because... than what they were used to before, right? It's because the monsters walk into the uh, thing and they still die. So people think that it's killing way more, but it's just because it leaves like this massive dot. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
and it does feel really nice to use because of the yeah. instant cap, which you know just helps the gameplay feel of it in general. You just drop it while you're shield charging and stuff. It's great. Maybe they did the reverse cyclo on this patch for skills. Yeah, definitely. Where instead of instead of removing AOV, they added AOV. Hundred percent. Not including the patch notes. Mm. Um, There's definitely a lot of stuff that they didn't throw in the patch notes that's like out there now. Yeah, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Or this this one in general. They're, suppo they're supposed to be there, but they're not. Yeah. This this release in general, definitely, I think a lot of people find really fun and really successful. But in terms of like bad things in the patch notes, not releasing things in the patch notes, and then just mm -hmm. bugs and crashes and everything. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> To anybody who's maybe a new player, like it's never been this bad. Like yeah, this is this is like a next level. This is like beyond anything we've ever had. Like twenty times beyond, except maybe Parandas, which I'm sure knew that was crash heavy. I mean, yeah. Breach was really crash heavy at launch as well. That was a really bad one for crashes. Um, I have never crashed as many times I've done this league ever. Yeah, I crash daily like twenty times, and it's not even exaggerating. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I'm serious. Twenty. No, I, I have... every single day. Yeah. Do you I want... don't crash anymore after this patch. Do you want to feel really bad for me? Do you want to feel like really, really bad for me? So I decided that I need stun avoidance enchant on my boots because Syndicate mm -hmm. likes to stun. Mm -hmm. I spent five hours farming Merciless Lab while crashing, uh... trying to get my boot enchant. I had to roll over leech enchant five times. Like I just couldn't get the fucking enchant on my boots. <laughs> And it was crashing, and it was so fucking painful, and it was just like... Mm -hmm. And every time it crashes, you're like, this would have been the run. I know this was the run which would have given me the sun avoidance. I know it. Uh, but yeah. Have you considered buying a new PC, Tarky? Like, Fuck come off. On, my man. PC... I've, I've got a really good PC. <laughs> um, actually, Carve, you might have had this as well. The thing which made this league start feel particularly painful... Um, for some reason, Discord was also crashing for a lot of people on yes. day one. Oh no. So I that was, was in my private league, uh, leveling in a three-man group. We would get randomly disconnected, which would like fuck up our split runs. And then Discord would crash while we're doing like splits, clearing different zones and stuff. And like, we were getting so angry. Like it was the most passive aggressive whispers. Like I fucking waited for your bullshit 20 minute queue. And then you didn't leave me a TV for the boss. The hell dude. <laughs> Yeah, we had the same, like, I don't, I don't know what, like, I was doing, like, the main progress, I don't know what boss it was, might have been, like, Doiter or something like that. There's, like, three people waiting, like, in the town for me to tell, like, join, but nobody's hearing, and I was just running in circles, like, screaming, why are you two coming? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, horrible. That was terrible. Mm. But anyway, so to get back into the Skeldershoff's point of view, uh, Nuggy, I need you to explain snapshotting in a winter orb because I've heard there's some glowing. Don't want to hear what I've been up to first. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Nuggy, yeah. what have you been up to? Oh, I, 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 I had a good day. I, oh, first day. I don't know if it happened to any of you guys, but this was really funny. Well, I felt really stupid. Um, so I got through the queue. Like I was like number hundred or something. I went to get my coffee. Uh, just before it started, because it was just finishing brewing, because I always make it right at the end, because that's smart. So I come back, and it just started. I see it's like it, it's it's been popping in before. I, did, I didn't know it was like 30 seconds or like 10 seconds. So I'm like, okay, accept, accept. I didn't click accept the terms of service. So it put me back in the queue. <laughs> no way. What? I was, yeah, you just, and... I was making, just I was making okay fun of people. Without checking the Not box, really. it just booted you back out. It didn't say, are you sure you yeah, don't no, want to no, accept? It just... it just booted you back out. Oh, I didn't even know. I'm, it's so automatic for me. I'm just like scroll click every time, dude. I didn't even think about it. I told, I'm like, what? Terms of service? What? I agreed to something? <laughs> oh, so that was but, great. So then I finally oh. started. I was playing Scion. Yeah. Tell me never to play Scion start again in Solo Snow Song <laughs> ever. I, I keep yeah. wanting, I have this like elaborate idea of my build, right? I'm like, okay, I'll struggle for a while. I struggle for a long time. <laughs> and then I, and then I died because uh, Betrayal was crazy. And then I rerolled again into Scion. And then I died because. Uh, I had some macro plus uh, language keyboard malfunction. So whenever I would click escape, 
Um, it had it thought I had my control pressed down, and if you press control escape, what happens? Try doing it right now. I'd rather not. It pops up your start menu thing in Windows. So my win instead of escaping, so I could click log out, it was just the start popping up over and over and over and over again. <laughs> So I just literally, I just like walked around and I, cause I could walk around. I couldn't click, click one either. Cause my macro was like <laughs> control one was go to hideout. So I would click my healing potion, but it wouldn't heal me either. So I just kept running around until I got, until I died. Uh, that, I was, that. that was great. That was the second one. And then the third one on my totem dude, I just got popped by Haku. So that was day two. Uh, yeah, so that, that was a good start. Then I went and played Cold Sniper Calls because I just wanted something like that was strong straight off the bat. And then it's just been like a breeze, like double falling, and like everything dies. Just run straight into the packs of like four betrayal monsters, don't care. Enfeeble on everything with curses, like, yeah. Yep. You can tell That's he's great. been waiting all week to have that rent chat. He was so yeah. desperate. <laughs> when he thought I'd skipped him, he's like, no, this is my time. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, uh, I, had, I, was, I was making fun of people, but like, you know, they get the the highlights, like the first highlights, where everyone have, was doing the same shit, like just clicking the continue without the uh, accepting. Oh. I was making fun of people, like, guys, you're supposed to like read these. Like, <laughs> read? But, you're crazy. But, just click accept and go on. You know you know what happened to me, though? I, no. I passed that test, but because uh, I was contributing in the... The, nine, the race to 9D, right? Last week. So I was on like this, like rave mode. So you know what I did after killing Hillock and uh, entering town? Oh, when I got no. the black I screen, out. I lock out. <laughs> <laughs> like four different people, like the whole way through the Twilight Strand, I'm like saying out loud, don't, don't look out, out, don't look out, don't look out. And then <laughs> I finally get it. I run to town and I'm like super paranoid about it. And like four people, like did a doom and all these people, all these racers <laughs> message me like, dude, I'm fucking locked out. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> like don't log out. I that actually, really I actually turn off my log out macros at league start. So I can't like log out on reflex. <laughs> I don't trust myself. Yo, the right is the the other option is to change it instead of going to login screen to go to character screen. Because yeah. You can change it so you can do that. Should That's always like do the that, actually. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Ventura did something like that too, where like the servers were crashing. I think that was the league where they like restarted the whole thing. And Ventura was like progressing and then he he logged off <laughs> and he couldn't put him back in. Uh, Completely exactly. unrelated, but I have to tell you this. The 90 race that I casted, Sparrow had a bug, so he had to type his password in every time he logged out. Watching him, like, kill Hillock, log out, then be like, type, 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 wait, no, delete, retype, type, type, enter. Did, like, 50 fucking times. But anyway. Um, so, Nuggie, uh, <laughs> the character selection. Win Winter like Orb, I hear there's some snapshotting. Uh, well, it's like, uh, I don't know if any one of you were around for the, I mean, every one of you, but people in chat have been around for Blade Vortex. You could do the same thing. So the essentially like snapshotting has been like part of PoE since the dawn of PoE. So every now and then people figure out, oh, there is a way to uh, cast a skill and then re keep that skill buffed through different means. So this time with Winter Orb, essentially what you do is you just you have a really juiced up Winter Orb with all your damage mods, no duration, no cast speed, and then you have a secondary Winter Orb with duration and cast speed, so like it loads up fast and it keeps the duration. And then you just mm -hmm. use that through the map. And it keeps the it keeps the initial one you casted. Like all the damage and all the projectiles and all that stays. So you'll have your control destruction, pen and all that. No no faster casting or 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 duration. And you'll just you'll keep that that one going. What's another thing that works the same way right now? I can't remember, but there's something that... I don't there's... think there's anything else right now that works like that, but BV worked like that for a long time. Yeah. There's the yeah, sort of similar-ish thing with like BV totems, where you can get yourself to max sacks, then your totem always has max sacks, mm. but that's oh, kind yeah, of different. Yeah, I guess a lot that. of extra steps there, though. I yeah. That one's more... Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you have to cast yourself, and then you cast the totems <laughs> after that. Do you think they'll change that, Niggy, or do you think they'll just be like, yes. 
Absolutely. Yeah. They will change it, but I don't think I don't think anyone should expect it to be fast. I mean, it could be the next patch if they have like a quick fix, or it could be a month or two, yeah. because mm -hmm. they're on vacation. I mean, we don't know what they're doing right now. It's that there's so many things in this league. Like, I think it's more important that people don't crash like 20 yeah. times a day than to fix a winter orb snapshot. Yeah, I don't there's think a it's lot. a high priority. Yeah, there's a lot of just things missing. Not even really bugged, but just not even there. Like, the full Zana quest line doesn't unlock the ability to Elder shape a map. Oh, which yeah. Was in the patch yeah, notes. Yeah. But it isn't. That's really annoying. Through any means. Well, even like big bugs, like people being unable to really properly delve after they've made another character, that was really annoying for like the first oh, couple how, how days. So? Like whenever you would make a second character, somehow it would like bug out. And for some people, I heard that even on the first character, it would bug out so that Nico wouldn't, like, he would give you the quest line over and over, no matter what you did, but oh. it, you couldn't ever complete it. And so that meant that no matter what you did, whenever you ran a delve, you couldn't do anything with the cart at the end. So mm. every time ah. you did that, you had to log out. And then like mm. the deeper you were, the longer it would take to load up everything. And so eventually you would get to a point where it was like, you do a bunch of delves and then you log out every time you do a delve for like 30 seconds and you go back in and try to again. And yeah, it would like actually finish the delve, but it wouldn't, yeah. I went down like 100 depth like that. Yeah. Yeah, same here. I had to do it, especially in SSF because like a lot of people were just... Uh, you know, doing the whole flare farming thing where you just don't map at all. You just run around and kill things with flares. And honestly, uh, that thing's pretty effective in SSF. And I mean, even yeah. on hardcore trade, there wasn't like a whole lot of competition, but Rathalos was still pulling like 20 mil at 99 and he got rank one. So it's really effective. So you really couldn't just bypass it. So it was quite a big deal. It made a big difference because it worked for some people and for some others it didn't. So Del Delavis did. I, at least it's also helpful in Delavis the way to win the 100 race, for sure. Yeah. It was last league and it was this league too. Even if it was harder to get there, or like slower to get there, but still. It's just Partic so absurd, XP. Particularly if you can get a, like a really juicy zone. Um, last league on my push to 100, I did a bit of flare running, like 20-something pack size zone with Bloodline and Beyond. And it was just yeah. insane XP. Last league I had a Bloodline, I know it was like 30 plus back size bloodlines beyond Abyss uh, Jesus. City. Yeah, that was crazy. And you get the uh, Bridgestone cards from them too. It was Ooh. insane. Oh, that's good this league. Yeah, I want to actually try like a six man uh, like quant farming in there with like Your flares. Oh, you yeah, mean just, just for the Bridgestone oh. cards. Yeah. Oh, that um, makes them. You I thought you. Them. I thought, I thought you were going off what uh, Noogie said about the cards because yeah, breach stones are crazy. No, 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 no. Just just breach. flare runs because if you're yeah. on six man people, if you organize the flare used spell, you can just clear it one hundred percent very easily. Mm -hmm. And don't need to worry about it. For anyone in chat who doesn't know, basically you can rather than paying the Azerite cost, sorry, the sulfite cost, you just get a bunch of flares and you just run the mob spawn, you kill them, you leave you reset, do again. I did a bunch of it last week. Um there's lots of weird little things like that. Although just briefly before we go off bugs, one bug which I find particularly amusing, if you use the large map device, there was a guy saying that you can go to someone else's hideout if they're using it, you can put a map in to their map device, open it. And then they can't open a new map from their map device. My suspicion is the reason for that is they just took the functionality of the large map device that was like previously in you know story mm -hmm. zones, perhaps. So maybe that's why it's open for public use, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> public use. <laughs> okay. so, yeah. well, that's pretty good. Pretty busted. That's Time pretty to find every streamer with a large map device and have some fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, the, that's the thing though. So with a lot of these bugs, there's one of those things where if you're the guy working support, you have to decide: is this guy an idiot or is this a bug? Because there are a lot of these bugs where it's like, oh, help! My delve quest is broken. It's like, can this guy not read or is the delve quest actually broken? Uh, so I have a lot of sympathy for their support team at the moment. But um, 
I just realized that I messaged support about the Delve bug and they still haven't responded. That was like a week ago. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they assumed I'm the idiot. Shit. <laughs> I mean, they fixed it, so I'm okay with it, I guess. I imagine they probably have a series of email addresses which they've just flagged as like, this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's saying. So whenever they get a message from Rise, well, it's like, it just goes in the Rise folder. Yeah. I got, yeah, I got pissed one time that I couldn't get a six socket in like 800 jewelers and I sent them an angry email. I was bugged just as a joke. Bug. That was probably a, that was probably oh a bad move. <laughs> right. Uh, chat as a PSA, Bay class does not condone harassing um, <laughs> the GGG support staff. Don't hey, do that. Um, on the I, topic. Got a, I, I got like a six link now. A carcass jack and like 10 fusings and then in the race to 90 i got another one in like 10 fusings and now i six link another one in like 10 fusings i mean shit is did you did you tell them that you think it might be bugged i keep getting these links too <laughs> yeah, quickly <it's> <laughs> i'll consider it when i can't get it yeah. then it's bugged for sure. um <laughs> on the topic of of bugs and sockets though um, the mind data that we have from PUEDB seems to suggest that the six socket craft, the six link craft, and the three of a certain color craft come from the Delve bosses, Vol, you know, the, the Vol boss, All, and uh, Kurgle. Mm. But I have killed two of those and not found any of them. Huh. And I've messaged other people who, who are deep down in Delves. They have not found them either. I've been getting a lot of messages from people who want me to like six socket their death oath or something. The mm. recipe seems to be bugged at the moment. No. And just not showing up or inconsistently showing up, it's really annoying. There are, a f see, the recipe thing is difficult as well because there is the totem and the curse chest, which then they didn't put in the game, but then didn't tell us that they didn't put in the game. But now they've re enabled totem on shield, but haven't re enabled curse on chest. And that annoyed me. Wait, and what? It, they haven't enabled curse and chest either? Yeah, so for yeah. anyone for anyone who uh, didn't know... I, the, like, I have everything else and I've just been waiting for that to... Oh. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> this is curse effect on shields, though. This is really yeah, funny, though. This is really sure. funny. So, for anyone who didn't know, the two mods they showcased us, the plus one curse chest and the plus one totem shield, weren't enabled. Carve uploaded a video. He was like, this is bullshit, man. You didn't tell us that this wasn't enabled. And I'm memeing and I'm laughing like, dude, totem builds are fine. It's whatever. And it was that, that you know, the quote, like, um, when they came for someone else, you sat by, now they're coming for you kind of thing. So I was like taking the piss out of him. And then when I'm like, wait, curses that aren't in the game? No, this is some bullshit, GGG. Fuck you. I wanted to use that plus one curse chest in my build. This is an outrage. How dare you fucking promote that I can have plus one curse chest? Fuck them totem boys, but curses, this is some real shit. I was so upset, so, yeah. yeah. It's so weird, though. Why wouldn't they... Why wouldn't they tell us? Like, just... I mean, Reddit didn't, Reddit didn't cry enough. We should have cried more. We need, now we need to make a Reddit thread about plus one curse chest. And then it gets enabled. Basically, you know what yeah. we should do? We should do, like, make up some bullshit mod that they weren't ever planning to add, <laughs> but then talk them into thinking that they didn't add it, even though they promised. I bet this would fly. Just got a message, Chris. He doesn't remember any of this shit. Dude, you know what's really bullshit, though? I was really excited for cast to trigger Amazon Prime on skill use, and it wasn't in the game. Like, the fuck, dude? <laughs> but, well, um... Smooth. Yeah. Anyway, to get off bad memes and bugs, let's talk about the actual league mechanic. How do we all enjoy Syndicate? First weekend. As an overall league, I think it's really good. I think they've taken a lot of steps. And just, I mean, they've just taken like the last year of all the different leagues and combined it into a great league. And it, it just, it feels great. Like, look aside, aside all the bugs and all the other crap, I think this has been a great league so far. I am really enjoying myself. Um, I think as far as the Syndicate mechanic goes, I think it's really clever and really interesting, and it takes a lot of time to unravel mm. and dig into it. I think it's less, a lot less agency from the point of view of the player than other mechanics have, while looking like it has more, though. Because you get mm. access to choices every time you get a Syndicate event, but you don't get to choose what Syndicate event is happening. You don't get to choose who those choices are. And you can spend a very long amount of time trying to get someone into the right branch without making any progress towards it at all. Which, honestly, I don't know if, if that's a good or a bad thing yet, but I think as people unravel the mechanic, there's going to be more 
um, complaints about that potentially, or at least at least more talking on that topic. I haven't personally had a hard have a, any have had a hard time uh, moving people into the branches I want to. I just I don't get the option to move people for a long time. Well, um, it's hard to move them from sideways, but if they're if they are not affiliated, yes, yeah. So you want to derank them into the unaffiliated, and then you spot them in again where you want them. If you the want issue to the issue can be when you get. Um, Sometimes I'll get a syndicate member that doesn't seem to want to be a syndicate member every, anymore. And every time mm -hmm. I get them, they just want to leave and I don't have the option to put them into a branch. And I don't want to put, I don't want to take Rin off my chart. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes someone will be in a leadership position and they're terrible in a leadership position like Vagan. And mm -hmm. I seem to see those people way less often, even if they're associated with each other really frequently like even if they've got a bunch of alliance or um, mm. or vendetta lines whatever you want to call them the the leaders of syndicates just don't really show up which is weird i would have expected to see more of them question have you been doing a lot of the thing where you change the order you do them in because that changes How the outcome you, you go so if you have three people out the options they give you oh, change yeah, based yeah. on who's left yeah. So you do like you check everything. Then if they're all bad, you then like mm -hmm. do the middle one, then check again. If, I think if a lot I don't people... have a good option for anyone, I'll take intel off someone I don't yeah, care exactly. about or something yeah. like that. I'll remove someone from the equation. You know, you have a lot of options in the moment, but what you don't have is the ability to choose which branch you interact with and who shows up. Basically, mm -hmm. you can make it more likely that someone shows up by taking them out of a branch, like um, mm -hmm. Noogie said, and then they'll just show up to random missions because they want to have a job or by increasing the number of connections on your chart, and then more people show up to everything. But you don't have the option always to execute to rank up. Like, you can't always control rank, and you don't have the option to always move someone around. Yeah, but and it's honestly... Really such a bad thing? No, not necessarily. I just wanted to bring up the topic, because I think it's interesting to talk about, because I don't know that there's that many mechanics in the past that have had... Well, there's obviously there's not really been mechanics in the past that have operated similarly to this. So figuring out exactly the ramifications of every decision you make and how the mechanic works, like on a long repeated basis, is really interesting to me. And I think that's one of the biggest things. Like it sort of fools you into thinking you have more agency than you do. Question, and I'm curious to hear what everyone says about this. If I leveled Kamira to rank three. Mm -hmm. Does he give me better loot with items equipped, or does it matter if I strip his items? You can strip his items up. It doesn't give you any better. Yeah, I don't think it matters at all. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what it just makes I harder. thought as well. Yeah, but a lot of people... Because my first thought was, oh, the items affect the loot in some way. And mm. I think that definitely catches a lot of people out. Like, knowing whether or not to remove items or not. I thought so too, but then I did a lot of fights with items and it didn't seem to do anything. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. You can get rid of them. It just makes things harder for you if they have them. I actually choose the get rid of X number of items um, slider, whatever it is, option pretty frequently because in high tier maps, items are scarier than the people wielding them yeah. most of the time. I, I will say though, um, I think there are combinations and ways to interact with it that we haven't uncovered. I'm also thinking that if you overload with trust that the whole system breaks down because I, mean? right now everything every every dude on my arrival or my betrayal like they all trust each other and i've had instances where i get like this same one dude like six times in a row it just doesn't make any sense so mm -hmm. i think i think that might be i, I don't know is there some bugs in there or what it is but they're like i ran betrayal like all day yesterday it was good at like the start and the mid, like the the to the middle of my stream, and then in the end, it was just like I couldn't. There was this. It was the same interactions I had all all the time, and it it seemed to like gravitate towards you get more trust branch trust branches over time if you don't reset, because you don't get rivalries very often. So the only options you have is like trust, execute, or remove, mm -hmm. and so you just get more trust built up over time. I think you're definitely right that there's more ways of interacting with a chart than our wife. Um, because somebody that I traded with yesterday to buy a, a pure breach stone off of when I was running some of those, because those are really fun, had 23 of them for sale. 
And those mm. you only get from having a rank three it that fled in research. So probably some means of, you know, spamming syndicates quickly enough to, to get it that fled into that spot, or maybe some means of making research missions happen more often than the others. I don't know. Um, nothing that I could think of, at least. My, I, I assume they were just running Strand super fast or something. Or buying them up and reselling them, which is also an option. Yeah. I mean, that's but the I, thing I is... like to think there's, you know, someone who's figured the system out a bit ahead of the community. That's the thing as well. You can force it actually incredibly quickly. Because I... I, can't, I think I did my first, like, mastermind, I think, halfway through, like, day two. And that was because one of my viewers is Australian. He's like, can you try and force it before I go to sleep? And I it was like, fuck it. I'll just like, I'll just chain Blood Aqueduct. And as soon as I hit it, I was resetting the zone. If you mm -hmm. actually like choose to, you can cap it super fucking quickly. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if there is a few people early on who like looked at the chart and went, okay, you're good, you're good, you're good. Boom, 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 boom. You know. Which would mean that if it was more deterministic, like if you could, if you had even more control over it, it could be very easily. Which is why I think it's mm. kind of a good thing that the system works the way that it does. Um, I just wanted to point it out because it's, I don't know, it, it's it's different in its fundamentals from any league we've had in the past. Which is crazy considering how much other content is being implemented into the core game alongside Betrayal. It's like, it's like better incursion in terms of interaction but they don't give us everything which is i think it's good what if I they am... give us if, I, if if they give gave us like the opportunity to do exactly what we wanted on there every single time very fast without needing to do like just like skip interactions to hope to get a better one it just it would be so much faster to get all the crazy yeah. loot from them because the no, rewards I... are pretty big I think this, the, in this system, they really wanted to capitalize on the thing that PoE does best, which is seemingly randomness that you can kind of control with knowledge, where initially it seems like it, there's it's just an absolute mess. Mm -hmm. But like as you gain more knowledge, you're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. But at the end of the day, you can't like really control the full system. And I think systems like that work the best. Sometimes it's more apparent, sometimes it's less. I mean, in a case of incursion, it's just like, oh, you don't get this room, then you don't get to do it. But here, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's it's just a lot less apparent like that. You can, like if... you can eventually do it by just do it, like keep doing it until you get the options. It just it, it yeah. can take longer. It's um, yeah, being able to hold off on making a safe house also means you can build your perfect safe house. Yeah, eventually, exactly. Which is interesting. Um, which is not something you could do in Incursion. Eventually, your temple, if it was shitty, you'd have to go run it to reset it. Um, but we've talked a lot about like the system. We haven't mentioned what I think Tarki wanted to talk about at some point as well. If we, if I can do a transition. Go Tarki. for it. Very smooth. Um, Very smooth. Is, uh, how powerful the Syndicate members themselves are. Because I think Crazy. people are underestimating, underestimating the items yeah. when looking at how difficult the Syndicate members are. Like, Haku Slam is terrifying, and Elrian's Consecrated Path is nasty on NKOE maps and all that, and they're, they're you know, nasty custom customers in their own right, but once they have, like, those items that give them corpse explosions mm -hmm. or acid explosions or 100% increased AOE or all that shit, they get really scary. So whenever you get the option to remove those, if you're having trouble with the Syndicate, you should get rid of items. See, that is actually what I think is the biggest failure of the League. And for the record, I love the League. But the thing which I realized very early, so again, leveling in a three-man party, I paid attention to what it did early. The two guys I was leveling with didn't, and they were dying constantly. I think the biggest mistake of the League is the fact that the I don't know what I'm doing option, you default to killing. And that's what Jonathan even said on Bay class. It's like, it's fine. If you don't know how the League works, it's fine. You can just kill them. The problem is the easiest, like, I don't know what I'm doing thing is that which is what makes it the hardest. So if you don't know how Syndicate works and you're like, I don't know what to do, I'm just going to kill them because that makes sense to me. You're making it harder and harder and harder for you. So I think that's the one fail that, like, the most easy to explain options are also what makes it the hardest for new players, you know? Is that a fail, though? Kind of. There's no indicator that, like, the rank going up actually makes them more difficult. 
I mean, like the items items makes sense. I mean, they get an extra star on the thing. I think that's a given. I, I, I've really had a lot the, of people be I, very confused they, about what the items do as well. Like yeah. People have thought the items are loot that they drop, or they don't even see the items, or they just don't know what they mean, because they've got obscure names like Booze Delight and shit like that. Um, they they could have been explained a good amount more, and I don't think it would have... Like I think part of why they didn't explain it is because they wanted to keep some mystique around the whole thing. Like, ooh, he got this mysterious, powerful artifact. What's he going to do now? We can but just people just... Right now. Yeah, and it gives yes. a short description. But it's not always, you know... Especially for newer players, it's not always enough to go on. Um, they, The betrayal help window could be a bit more fleshed yes. out, I yeah. think. Um, it is still helpful, and for anyone who hasn't noticed it, if you hit the, the V key to open up your betrayal map, there's a little help box there that explains things. It's sort of like a legend, basically. Um, but yeah, number one tip, remove items. Number two tip, kill those totems that show up in fortification yeah. missions, because those things buff them pretty hard. And they're also, they've also got good drops. We have to get through the door first, and when you go this through the true. door, and it's a tough map, and then eight necro spawn that all do like five thousand damage when they crit with their stupid spear. <laughs> That's why you usually there's two doors, Aww. so you destroy the first door, you yeah. lure them out, you go to the other side, and then go in yeah. and destroy the totems. Doors, so, man. Talking about the actual like power level of it all, I think we'll all agree it's challenging. I don't want them to nerf it. I think they will. Is anyone else happy with the current difficulty level? Of the syndicate members themselves, yes. Yeah. Some of them. I think some of them are. I think there's like two specific. Maybe, I think the Ida Fled and uh, Tora might need a bit, but everything else seems fine. Yeah, it's just that it's too much of a hard counter against a specific thing. Because, like, with Which this one? League, like, just, just so I get over my thought process. Mm -hmm. So with this league specifically, every league introduces a sort of danger towards a specific type of gameplay. So like in the case of Beast Jerry, uh, there was a lot more shock and there was a lot more chaos, for instance. In the case of uh, Delve, there's like a lot more cold damage and like small hits that really wreck you where like possibly something like armor could be more powerful. And in this case, not only did they take like and it's also chaos damage, I suppose, in, in Incursion, right? Or like a lot of like projectile defense and all this. In this league, it's like every one of these guys has something that counters a specific like build archetype, right? Where you can't cover your like every side mm -hmm. of everything. And so that's totally fine as long as it's something that is well uh, explained. So for instance, I was... People were so freaked out that in the start, I was skipping all betrayal because I, I kept watching replays of people dying <laughs> to like random shit. And I was just like, this is crazy. Like, how are people doing this? Like, this guy got stabbed in the foot by some Janus guy and he instantly fell over. Like, I didn't get any of it, right? So I just didn't want to die to something random. So I kept skipping it. But then eventually, I started doing it and I realized, oh, okay. So Janus, he actually has like an entire animation where he puts his hands down and then the thing starts chasing you with a delay. You can genuinely just walk away from it. It's not going to do any damage to you, right? Same for like Haku slamming. It's like, oh, Haku slam covers the entire screen. Well, not really. It actually only covers like a part of something away from him. As long as you're closer to him, it's supposed to like counteract builds that are off screening. If you're closer to him, then you do better, right? Because he mm -hmm. doesn't really deal a whole lot of damage. But in the case of uh, Tora and It, I, I think those are ridiculous because CI builds deal with them the best, like, oh, insanely mm -hmm. well, and then everything else gets absolutely fucked. And also... In their can case, can I, can I really argue well. that? And maybe this sure. is just a case of I'm a god gamer. But I'm well, playing in possibly. a... Possibly. 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 I'm playing in a private league. I'm softcore. 20% haste. Minus 20 all res. This affects chaos res. Tora and it that fled are not what scare me. And I'm playing a life based build. I've stolen minus chaos res. It's not that bad. I right? mean, dog, I got to 98 and I died to a door. You well, know, that's because like, you weren't playing I the game, even, man. I didn't even, I didn't even <laughs> die to the, to the betrayal, guys. Right? Yeah. Like, just because. Um, but that's the thing, too, right? That, for instance, 
to me, Janus is super easy because my build was kind of like a dot build, so I just had a whole lot of mobility. But then something like Rin, that to a lot of people who actually have mitigation, you know, is easy. That thing fucks me so bad. Like, I, I cannot, like, she off screens me, and if she has an item, it's crazy. I just saw Gucci get melted to her. So, like, you're going to get hard countered by these things, and in a way, you can control it because you can kick them out. But, like, there's only that, so much you can do, you know? I mean, that's a good point. It Would it be, if they're going to have a really wide damage profile in the league, unlike previous ones, you know, like Incursion, where it was mostly chaos and physical and spell projectiles and such, like you went into, then maybe creating more extreme differences between rank 1, 2, and 3, like lower the damage more than it is now on a rank 1 syndicate mm. member, keep 3 where it is or buff it a bit, and then your choices matter even more. Like, if you have difficulty yeah. dealing with someone, keep them low ranked. If your build is good at dealing with Yanis, as you said, rank him up. And then you have space for people to make a second build to try and get loot out of it that fled. Or make a second build to try and get loot out of Yanis for some reason or another. Or probably Camaria because he's the best syndicate member in every branch. Right. Um, but... He, he gets no. amazing loot in like everything. No, yeah. maybe no. not quite. Okay, oh, he's, he's going to like, <laughs> not Camaria, on everything. He, Camaria is is my husbando. I think I said that wrong. I don't know. Um, <laughs> fuck the ice spikes. Everything was Camaria husband. all day. Um, anyways. <laughs> You could have room, basically, to make specialized builds for specialized content, which I think is one of the strengths of Path of Exile. I think mm -hmm. that's really cool. It allows you to go into niches. And so if you make these things more extreme, but also more extremely downscaled at the lower levels so you can safely deal with them by sort of relegating them to just, you know, being unemployed, essentially, um, that could be a, a way of dealing with the, the wide damage profile. The, I totally the agree. And I think they did a great job with everything else, honestly, because again, those things are transparent. But when it comes to Torah, it really emphasizes one of the things that I, I like about PoE the least when it comes to balancing the game, which is chaos and non-chaos things are just such an extreme difference because CI doesn't care at all. And then everything else just dies if it's like scaled <laughs> through. So unless you've got positive resistances, it's it's really going to be quite hard. But even then, she's got effects that kill you like after her death, which is also really lame. And uh, it's just not nearly as transparent. And so, same with it, who basically looks at you for approximately 0.3 of a second and just thumps you with an AOE covering like half of the screen, which, you know, like ball, I've lived right? through, but like, shit. What's up? It. She plays like a bomb. So I, still, I still don't really get it. I'm kill like I I run her a lot, but she's really scary with that. Like it's like a isn't it a bomb mm -hmm. she plays on the ground? You can like yeah. see the um. There's like a, there's like an Every animation. Every time it shows up, I either I either get chunks to half or nothing happens, and I'm really not sure. It's a hand. Yeah, it just goes. It's like it's it like cleave animation, like... right? It's like the cleave the MTX no, cleave. No, it's the thing that like comes from above you and just goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. don't stand in it, so that's why. No, I, I think, don't think that's it's a bomb. really hard. It's really hard to see that one. I agree. that one is really hard to see. Yes, they could, like, they like, like. There's no good. argument that they could improve the mm, visibility the of this stuff. But like, but, like that's the particularly thing. playing Vortex against Camaria, the ice spikes are the same color yeah. as Vortex, yeah. so you but, cannot see them. But like, that's the that's the thing, right? That with chaos, like, just get chaos rest forehead. I mean. If, if, if you, you can. got Chaos Rest, if you got like 60, you're taking like mm -hmm. four times less damage than you would on like a normal character. But I mean, these differences are just so extreme from build to build. But in the case of specifically Chaos Damage, I feel like we need to establish that you either actually play around Chaos Damage. And, you know, at this point in the game, everybody's got so much power creep. Everybody's got so many crazy items in this entire crafting system and everything. Where we get the game to the point where... Getting chaos resistance is a thing, or we keep it not a thing, and that's just that's just how I see it. And I think the game would totally be fine if like there were more instances of heavy chaos damage in the game, and people would actually have to gear for it. But that's not the case. This is like the only exceptions in the whole game. Yeah, I, I think that's incursion now as well. You, I mean, there's so in... many instances of chaos damage now. You've got incursion. You've got the Malagaro map. That Malagaro hybrid uh, chaos BV fucking wrecks. 
Uh, you've got the Essence Drain Exile, who you can randomly yoink if you're not, like, paying attention to it. Like, there's Chaos Damage. I think there are two big things with Syndicate, which is good and bad. One, I think that a big reason why people struggle with different Syndicate members isn't necessarily their build, but it's how they play. Because all the different Syndicate members, their attacks are so different. So some of them are based on, like, floor stuff, right? Some players don't ever look at the floor. Doesn't matter what build they're playing, just, that's just not how they play PoE. So they get wrecked by that guy. Whereas this other person, he's really good at looking at the floor, but he's not that good at like, oh, well, this does this kind of damage, so I need to avoid that. And then you've got this guy who doesn't have to press flasks, and he's he can look at the floor, but he can't stand near doors. So you need to like know like who is who based on what. And just nerfing one master specifically doesn't solve everything. I think the, in the other games, it's like in, in like StarCraft or something, it's like, oh, this player is really aggressive. Oh, exactly. This player is like yeah. a really macro based player. In PoE, it's like this guy doesn't look at the fucking. Floor. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I mean, no, but like it's one of those things, though. But and the second thing, when it comes to visual clutter, I honestly don't know what they can even do about visual clutter. And my best example is the Mastermind fight. So the first time I did the Mastermind fight, I was a headless chicken. I killed it, but I was running around for 50 minutes. There's a video on my YouTube. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I was using all the new Ghost Flame MTX from the loot boxes. The Ghost Flame MTX is the exact same shade of green as everything in that fucking fight. If you're using any of that MTX or character effects, you can't see anything. And you laugh and what's silly about it. They've added a arrow to the floor when you're doing that fight, which points you towards the totems and what you need to do. You can't see that on my first character. When I did that on my second character, I could see it because I was using a different MTX. How yeah, do you I mean... how do you even like pick like oh this color good, this color bad when some characters are like surrounding themselves in giant purple like beams? Because then you can't I, yeah, use. I mm. can't speak to this because w w I wasn't doing betrayal right, and then the loot boxes and stuff came out, and that was the same time that I started doing betrayals, and I got the little totem pets that pop up from the ground yeah. and every time i was doing a betrayal fight i was like what the fuck is chasing me and it was my own <laughs> pet like right there, i'm just like Dude, what is that? You know? i was freaking out the whole time so i don't know you, you gotta get used to it i guess just paid to lose <laughs> it's paid That's to it. lose man but um it's genuinely true though because it's not like they can have oh this is the color this is because a lot of games when they do floor telegraphs it's like green is good red is bad don't stand in red you can stand in green they can't do that with poe because we have every single color palette of random skill effects and random mtx and another thing which you'll find really funny similar to that thing the luxurious or the luxurious hideout which has the grid tiles on the floor based on the default waypoint location Every time I zone in, the corner of one of the tiles perfectly lines up with the edge of my green screen. So every time I enter my hideout, I go to adjust my green screen because I think there's a black line when it's actually just the fucking tiles on the floor. And it's like... Just more the waypoint, dude. I, yeah, that's what I ended up doing, but yeah. Sorry, continue. <laughs> continue I think what? as far <laughs> as the syndicate boss fight goes, as far as the, the mastermind fight, um, one thing that could improve the uh the issue you ran into is a voice line i mean they probably can't do that for syndicate events but for the mastermind fight they could have jun shout something like zana does in the shaper fight you know to me mm -hmm. exile a similar thing to that well that's the thing about i think audio like a lot better. huge role in betrayals no like i don't even look at what i'm fighting i just look at the chat log like oh okay rin's shouting yep. janice is shouting and Haku's shouting that's what i'm fighting like I don't even look at the at the guys. It's impossible to see. So for sure, they call like out as well. Part. If you have sound on. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard to keep track of that though because they will all call out over each other. And yeah, it's just like, like a <laughs> huge true. mashup. Yeah. If you yeah. kill someone <laughs> within a few seconds of them spawning, like if you're running, you know, content that you're pretty over, oh, yeah, yeah. they'll their death line will play <laughs> over their spawning <laughs> line, so they'll they talk can, over can, themselves. Can, have you had the bug where, like, randomly uh, June starts, like, telling you her life story? Yes. And, like, these guys are, like, <laughs> screaming and dying. Oh. Like, I, had, I had a burrito. Like, oh, I had a sandwich yesterday, and it was delicious, blah, blah, blah. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Oh, God. It's crazy. I had an incredibly talkative Verici once who, where he spawned, he played his voice line, I killed him, he played a death voice line. 
Then he played another Spawn voice line for some reason as I was talking to him about his bargaining. So there were four Verichis talking at once on top of each other. <laughs> I think the best bad. description I heard of it day one was someone saying this league is like when you join a Discord channel, which is already too full. Yep. <laughs> I can see that for sure. I but guess... I mean, it helps. It's like the only way for them to really translate what's going on on the screen because the bosses themselves aren't indicative enough. What if they just made them bigger? Just make the them bosses bigger? Yeah. Yeah, are they bigger when they're rank three, or is that just because they have so many items? No, they, they, they are bigger. slightly larger. They look like headhunter buff kind of thing. Oh, maybe. Really? Nice. They have like titles and stuff too. Yeah. Generally, I I've always thought that while it's kind of cool from a lore point of view in games when the boss is the same size of you, it just feels terrible. It's like if you've ever been like a melee player in a WoW raid and they make the final boss of the tier like a normal character size and you're like, great, uh, uh, brilliant. Like, just make it massive. Just make everything massive. Make it glow. Uh, that was the main thing which really annoyed me with the final uh, Mastermind fight is there's an immune phase and she didn't gain a bubble. And people are like, Taki, you're so stupid. Like, she's immune. And it's like, well, you can still damage her ES. So if you're not paying attention, you're dodging the mechanics on the floor... Her visual doesn't change enough. So, so many people don't know what the fuck is going on. Just give them a bubble. Give them a, a obvious, like, telegraphed visual, and we're okay. Yeah, like, Shaper loses his health bar when he goes immune, and Uber Elder and Uber Shaper get the bubble, like you yeah. say, so. I like it how I get, I don't get anything that you're talking because I haven't been to the fight yet, because both times I've been, like, 50% to the uh, Mastermind when I died, and I'm again, like, like 30 or... 30 or 40 percent right now i think of my newest character it's I've that's already forever i pussied out i never did it it's an incredibly it. good fight and i'm personally not spoiling it chat it's an incredibly good fight it's one of the best fights they've ever made it's also one of the worst fights they've ever made and every single first kill video i've seen of it involves people running in circles saying is this bugged yep. for me there was so my first kill was 15 minutes long there was a five minute window of me running and stuff saying, I don't know if this is broken or not. And because I was one of the first people to kill it, nearly everyone in my chat hadn't killed it yet. And they're like, yeah, I think it might be like cold snap is bug, so it's not phasing bosses. Uh, so then there's like, well, we'll stand here and see what this does. And then eventually we got it sorted. And there are people who are like, oh, it's really obvious. You just like DPS all this phase and that phase happens. When you do it, you'll know what I mean. If you're someone who worked out within the first four seconds, good for you, but this isn't like nearly any other fight in Path of Exile. It's like a WoW fight. It's cool, but this is unlike any other PoE boss fight we've had. Hmm, interesting. Okay. I've, I've been hearing that a lot. A lot of people message me like, yo, this is bugged. This thing's immortal. I can't kill it. What's up with this? I've been getting that a lot, but I haven't done it myself, so... And the worst thing is you don't actually know if... if if they're right about them them being buggy, because some so much things are just buggy right now. So we just yeah. When somebody got, I have so many people come to my chat like asking about Atlas things, and I'm just like, yeah, that's probably a bug. And then like completely different. Yeah, yeah, that's probably just a bug. And it's like, can I can't even tell if the three to one recipe change is an intended mechanical <laughs> change or is a bug because it was not mentioned in the fucking patch notes. It's like yeah. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah, I remember like Ventura was making fun of me because I didn't know about it until like day two or something. And I was like, mm, how do I get this map? And Ventura was like, dude, are you fucking stupid? Just use the new thing. I'm just like, how am I supposed to know about this? Like, nobody told me about this. <laughs> like, what? I, I or had the his... whole thing with Shaper Influence, you guys got that? Where if you get your uh, Shaper Orb off of like Elder, and the the elders there, and you you run you run the map. It doesn't remove the influence, Rise, so you can run Rise, the same Rise, thing over and over. Rise. I would like to thank you for personally mentioning the thing that Chris explicitly told us not to mention on this bay class because they're patching it, and I told everyone not to bring it up. So thank you. Uh -huh. There's okay. currently a bug for anyone who. Fuck you, Rise. It's fucking useless anyway. Wait, really? Yes. You're fucking with me. No, I'm no. not. Read the Discord logs. There is a oh bug. They are patching it out. I explicitly did not want to mention it for an obvious I'm reason. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry to everybody. Don't do it, chat. Now? 
You yeah, should just do it. Just, me. What the fuck? Just, just explain the, it now. Just explain it no, now. No, don't explain it. What the fuck? Okay, basically, don't yeah. do it. It's an exploit. You might not get banned, but you might get banned. Don't do the thing. Don't just don't do the thing. <laughs> Why did you stop me? What the fuck? Look, I wasn't sure because there are so many different bugs. Me and yeah. Carl, <laughs> me and Carl both looked at each other like, is this? Is he saying that? No, he's not that stupid. He must be talking about one of the other bugs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because there, there are, there are, there is like a bug where, uh, like, where if you have Elder Spawn on a random map, that uh, you had a different tier, you're gonna get the orb from there. But there's just like there's so many bugs in the Atlas right now. Listen, I, this is I to my defense, this is not my fault. Okay, these people talk about fucking frying tuna in this chat twenty four seven. I can't be reading the fuck? this we can, stuff. We should we should go we should go over this Discord for this. this Genuine. Okay, just just I mean, just. We don't just have to do that. I'm it's just the going to. I'm just list. literally. I'm just going to read the last four messages. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, By the way, I had like five people ask about the bug. I don't know if we should talk about it. I then say, hmm, I don't know. Chris directly asked me not to bring it up. Then he's like, but what if people talk about it? Monka S. Then, Noogie, I'm here. We all ready? Yes, ready. He had to scroll up like two fucking messages. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know. Okay, it's fine. Nobody knows about it, okay? It's fine. It's getting, actually, it's getting fixed soon. It's getting fixed soon. Just by setting, like, I was running the, you know, the 3 to 1, uh, the 3 to 1, um, shape map upgrading method. So I was, like, inadvertently just doing it every time I did that. Yeah, yeah that's it. Because I was like, what, what's going on here? There's something fishy. Like, oh. It's <laughs> oh. so, it's so easy to, uh, encounter this bug. Yeah. Because of, because of the way you, a lot of people get their fragments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't even think it's that beneficial, to be honest. It's weird. Wait, what? It's ridiculously it's broken. Price, price. Uh, same thing. Can you can you say any expensive unique Drug. from any Atlas specific boss? Like Lux's Eye from Elder, maybe. No, it's not how that many big maps? Of a deal. It, how many maps does it take on on average for you to spawn Elder? It just. Like 40, 50, something like that. When you move the map, when you get the influence, and it's Wait, like moving don't the influence. It now. Fuck. <laughs> I'm trying to downplay it, dude. Like, on, right, okay, to move on, and let's all just, again, we bring Rise here for the commitment and dedication he brings to every single episode when he shows up. So, talking about the Syndicate power level, how do we feel about the actual rewards of the Syndicate? Uh, on that amazing. level. It's, it's, it's minus, crazy Minus rewards. two guys, it's amazing. Yeah. Just like buff like Wagon, and then I don't remember the other guy. It was the Hillock or someone? Uh, There's like two guys who have like complete dog shit rewards. Oh yeah, Basically, I was, like, they are. Oh, I was Bacon gonna, like, consider... gives like nothing. Hillock is yeah. very good at once because he can give quality to flasks. So you want to use him to and like weapons. Yeah. And chests. Yeah. So like you want to use him if you're crafting a specific item, but then once you've done that, you never want him again. Um I thought you guys were talking about the, the loot from actually fighting the Syndicate member in the map, too, which is pretty significant. Like, uh, I have them drop maps for... I have them yeah, drop currency that's how, fairly often. That's, we, that's how we jumped into the D15s when the highest broker the Atlas at the time was uh, in the league was yeah. at T11s. But yeah, so, their, their safe house rewards are insane. I've brought it up a few times, but I think playing like private leagues in Solo Cell Phone, you guys probably haven't run into it yet. Pure breach stones are absurd. Yeah. A pure mm -hmm. Zoff Breachstone is eye level 82 with 250% experience gained and 100 pack size. Like, I was level 96, I ran one of those and got more than 5% of a level. It's pretty good. Wasn't, pretty good. It, wasn't it something like 80 million experience an hour it's at crazy. 99 for like 80, the 90 guys? something, yeah, 85 to 95, I think. It's how Havoc lost, for those wondering. Why did Havoc lose? It's because they had like 100 Breachstones, pure. And they ran them. <laughs> it also guarantees a blessing drop. So I think right now the numbers work out in Betrayal Softcore that if you can handle a pure keel of breach stone, you basically just print money. Because you can sell the blessing and then keep all the rest of what drops and break even just about on the blessing. Maybe a little less than breaking even, and then the rest covers it. And I, mean, you know. I think we don't want to. I think you can even pro prophecies in them. 
yeah, yeah, I mean, like, at worst, break even. Like, if we're talking an unlucky run with the other drop. Depends on the price of the blessing. It's, like, these things are really hyped up. And any time where there's a, an opportunity like that, it goes away quickly. So I don't want to say guaranteed yes, because this is going to get uploaded on YouTube and somebody's going to, you know, go do that two days later and it's not going to be profitable anymore. But it certainly was for mm. a little bit and it might still be now. Another thing we can do to crash the market, uh, what's really Ooh, good... Boy more shaper and elder item drops those are like yeah. crazy 300 percent more shaper items if you put that into a juice up map it's like every pack is just like dropping like eye level 83 85 just like pfft, just take it it's, it's nuts which nice. eventually is going to devalue yeah. those things like you know that's a, a very short a month bubble. into this league yeah. A month into this league, Shaper bases are going to be, like, outside of the most hard-to-get ones, like Bone Helmets, Elder, super high level. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. It's actually a good way to farm Exalt in Sol on Sol Sol Found, That's or, like, in small point. private leagues. Oh, uh, yeah. Because you because you get that in, like, fully juiced up maps, you get a lot of, ju like, uh, Shaper mm -hmm. and Elder jewelry. And yeah. if you don't if you don't actually craft them, because at some point you're going to have so much of it, you can just use the, yeah. the Exalt recipe. Mm -hmm. And that, that does keep uh, the scarabs is having some value, so the shaper and elder scarabs are probably worth going for. Um, I think people are underestimating. People are like the price has been going up a ton, and people are using them. But I think people are still possibly underestimating um, both sulfite scarabs and cartography scarabs. Yeah, because delve is crazy. In a day of delving, I went from like two T16s and I map pool to fifty, um, because the cities just spawn so often now. And the cartography one, um, I took a hint from Grimm and <laughs> yeah, layered that. a map with a mm -hmm. um, the sextant that gives 500% quant boxes, a gilded cartography sextant, uh, sorry, gilded cartography scarab, gilded ambush scarab, and monstrous treasure, and literally had more map drops than I could carry in an inventory from that map. <laughs> so, like, the level of investment you can put into a map now is just through the fucking roof like it's into the stratosphere at this point it if you and there's so many different ways to invest too like there's the new master seeks help prophecies as well which are just kind of worse than scarabs because they don't guarantee proc and they don't give you the benefit of more sulfide for nico but there's no alva scarab so you could do master seeks help for alva that's probably mm -hmm. worth running and then you can farm corruption chambers and like you can just you can target the content you want to do so easily this league and when they Hopefully, I don't know if I don't know if it's actually intended that we don't have the plus five tiers and the elder your map. But whenever, wherever, no matter where your like the uh, dailies or the objectives spawn, you could just like make it T16 map immediately. Yeah. So I can see them removing them because that again, that's just like why wouldn't you tell us if that because... was the case. I've actually run into the problem already where because master sec master scarabs, pardon me, are so powerful and they give a enhanced master, so like a polished Nico scarab gives hundred percent more sulfite, mm -hmm. it just barely feels worth my time going after a master mission on the Atlas. Because it's gonna be in a less invested map, because it's not on my eldered map. Uh, so it doesn't have like sextants and stuff. And I can't you can't have two master missions in a map. If you try and put like a Nico Scarab into a Alpha master mission map, the game will throw an error and it will tell you you can only have one master mission in a map. Um so that's my main worry with how crazy content can get now. I feel like people who reach that point might get burned out even more quickly because once you do a map like that one that I that I invested in as much as I did. Any content after that just feels like, you know, a letdown. Once you do a pure Breachstone, anything else feels like a bit of a letdown. Um, which honestly is pushing me towards considering a month or a little more into this league going into some solo cell found and giving that a go. It's a... a I'm incredibly glad, and I'm going to talk about this because I know Rise memed me a bit when I said I was starting on a private league. It's like, why would you ever do that? This is a really good league to have like a small group micro-economy. Because we already have, like, setups where we've got people like, oh, this guy, like, owns this market. Like, we've got one guy who just, like, buys all the Prophecy coins, and he's, like, doing his own setup with that. And then we've got, like, our boss killers. And this is, like, a very good league to have, like, your niche, because there is so much you can focus on if you want to. And I feel like that's the other thing as well. Don't feel like you have to do everything. Like, if you're like, I don't enjoy doing this one thing, don't do it. You know? 
Like, just focus. If you love Delve, you can do a surprising amount of Delve this league. You just need to get past that first, like, what, 5, 10k Soulfight yeah. cap, and then it's... Oh, we yeah. talked about it a bunch. Um, my advice to anyone who wants to get their Delve chart to a point where it's profitable rather than an annoyance is to just say fuck it to anything that isn't capacity until yeah. you hit 10,000 capacity. Mm -hmm. yeah. like at, least, my dark... at least 5k. Yeah. 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 5K, just, probably just 5k go, if just you're in like down, yeah. Because my darkness res at one point I think was like negative 200. Like just mm -hmm. stay next to the cart. Don't go off into the darkness. It's tempting. There's boxes of money and fossils out there, but you'll get better rewards if you get deeper. Yeah. Yeah, you so can just keep going down. Just down yeah, and you, down. It's and more, can, more important. Yeah, and uh, eventually you can upgrade the darkness resist and then you go back with the uh the light like the uh lit road and then just go to the side zone yeah. later yeah. you can you can go break all the walls later on you don't have to do it while you're going with the cart initially if like he... I'm, I'm like minus 100 resist right now and i'm just like following the cart right now going down because the deeper you go the more you get the uh, as right per node as well so it makes the upgrading a lot easier yeah, yeah. i think they really should have made nico dig a little further down yeah the eye level that he yeah, stopped that was weird it's like pretty rank odd. it's like 50, 50 or something yeah the eye level is like 56 or 57 which is like multiple levels off of t1 maps maybe it's a little more than that but it's it was not even near mapping level which is very strange we thought it was why broken. they changed yeah. it because it, it used like, to be 70 before didn't it 77 i think was well the they, rank. they expect you to be getting less fuel so they wanted to like scrunch up the system in order to make it so that people got to relevant content faster but it kind of had the opposite effect i think like i i level 83 for reference is for 239 now it's not 270. huh it's just the, the main thing when i realized like oh okay i need to just ignore everything was when i was running like early even in super early red maps you're getting it like 1.1 1.5k per node and yeah. in one node you're getting more than your total capacity and you're like mm -hmm. i'm gonna use a lot of portals over the next few minutes because it's like hit one node portal go back run a mezzy delves hope you don't crash or lose your map go back in that was the main thing it was that stress of please don't yeah. crash please don't crash please don't crash please don't crash uh the the hideout instances were just crashing non-stop yeah. for me yeah pretty bad seems yeah. to be fixed now but it's always like that when league starts i'm still crashing when it comes to my hideout <laughs> i actually have I only haven't crashed had once and it was today <laughs> like i haven't had any crashes apart from that one one but there's like other things been so much it's, it's been so buggy league okay question then so we all agree that they need to like mess with the delve site sulfite though how do mm -hmm. we feel about the implementation of incursion because that was one thing a lot of people were really worried about i think it's pretty good, good. i'm liking it yeah, yeah. alva good. needs an icon on the mini map other than that good yeah. also yeah. there's a bug with alva where if you talk to alva and open a portal and then walk away towards another Alva. You, like... She teleports away, and you can no longer enter that portal. You open. Oh. <laughs> so don't do that, or you lose an incursion in your map. I've had that where there's because there's no like set distance from how di uh, distant they spawn from another. You can sometimes have it where if you take one step in one direction either way, it just chains spawns between two. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've noticed this. I think I had a uh, the betrayal dudes. I killed them. I misclicked my log out. I have to walk back and they disappeared. Were they showing up because they were like allied or no, no, they were they had, like, I, had, I hadn't interacted with any of them, right? So I just killed them off and I walked back. I don't know. Oh, you had already killed them and they yeah, were waiting I, I killed to be them interrogated. And I went back and they were gone. There's a weird thing what where do you think they're gonna wait for you. Like what the fuck? I don't know. I think okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Jen has a knife to their throat. I would just wait. Walk away. Forehead. They just this poof. They I guess, I guess this thing. I guess it's just have you have you tried it again, like just killing them and then leaving a map, like just going out of the map and come back. No, I, haven't tried. I, just, I, just, I, I just I think I that will it, so that will always them, fail because weird. there's the thing where if you have like the library, if you have the research floor and you enter a Zana mission, you lose it. So you need. Some... Yeah, it carries over to both. Yeah. I think awesome. that happens with all of them, but transportation and intervention just don't show up, so you don't really notice yeah, it. That's fair. Also, I've had a Zana mission spawn inside of a Zana mission, 
but the yeah. Zana mission that spawned in the Zana mission couldn't open any portals. Oh, it opens. oh that's so sad. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah, I had that too. Oh, they should go deeper and deeper and we can literally play. Um, yeah, it doesn't what work. What are we called? Ah. Oh. Inception. Inception. Yeah. Yes. One thing, and I'm curious. Then what... you can get the in, the. Uh, we could get an achievement called Inception for getting a Zana and a Zana. It'll be great. One thing I'm curious about, and this really annoyed me, and chat didn't know what the hell I was talking about, but maybe you guys will get it. So you know how when Alva spawns, you always get three Alvas guaranteed, but when Nico spawns, you get one to three. That triggers the fuck out of me. He should have a set like number, and I know it says it on the right side of the screen. But it's that fact that if you know you're always going to get three nodes, and you're like, oh, I'm always going to look for those three nodes. The fact you sometimes only get one node, it like it breaks that mental loop. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? It's also I a know, gamble. I know. Every time you yeah, buy a you don't always get three Xanas, though. I mean, three Alvas. Yeah, you do. I think the only times you don't. How is would you? I think the if only time you is it when it's at the very end of a. Yeah, if yeah. you're at the end of a temple. Yeah, so yeah. you get the two. What are you talking about? It breaks your shit anyway. You get three sometimes and two sometimes. It's so different though. What you get? You, only you get, get three, 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 two, three, 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 two. I mean, that's not that deep. The worst about the worst thing, about, like the worst thing about that, uh, by the way, Turkey, is that when you have the the daily objective. You're like, oh shit! I have like a T15 Nico. Then you go in and just like one. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've got I've gotten two alvas in a thing without. Yes, because you were missing only two incursions from a temple. No, no, no. I feel like I, I, did, I that. did that without it being the last one. You may have opened a portal on an alva, forgot about it for a moment, walked yeah. towards the other one, and broken yeah. your previous. Uh, yeah. 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 I think Octavian exactly just happened. like explained it like we need to go. Yeah, I know, but I probably didn't do that. I never misplay like that. No, no. <laughs> Perfect. God gamers, god gamers. Um, oh, the betrayal rewards. Never like we never really like talked about them because uh, there's actually well, there's one. There's one. No, no, no. But that, not that. Like actually, actually, the dro now we're going <laughs> back to the actual drops. <laughs> no, no, the actual drops. Right? Oh, okay. Sure. The, so the map one is good, but have you noticed how shitty the rares are? Yeah. Oh. And it's because yeah. I'll, I'll explain why. It's because. Um, the crafted mod uh, occupies a one of the mods yeah. of the items when it drops so you can get a three standard drop which is terrible because oh. you could always just craft and mod on yourself so you're getting like you're getting a lower mod pool because of it so it just makes the the, the jet like the rare mobs that you get even though they're veiled terrible on average I also wanted to bring that up because we've all played quite a lot. So we're probably in the same case. We already have like 95% of the crafts all maxed out. So it feels particularly bad picking up veiled mm -hmm. items because you know, I'm probably going to walk this to the vendor, uncover nothing, and then yep. have to sell it. How I don't know how they can fix that. And it's going to become more of a problem the later we get into the league. But it's like, once you've gotten most of the crafts fully maxed out, the vast majority of veiled mods you pick up just slow you down. But you have to pick them up in case they have that one mod that you're missing. Yep. Uh... Primal, ancient, legendary <laughs> is the solution. We make it so that oh. some of them spawn with two mods. I mean, you could you could change it also so that it's always a five mod plus the veiled mod. No, four mods. So it's all you're plus all veiled. Or four. Yeah. Yeah, like you're always yeah, guaranteed at least like a five mod item. Yeah. But but then it's like on average, like it's then would it be it would be the average of a regular. Rare plus rare yeah, and have it plus, yeah. but without you having to pay for the craft. Yeah. That's all yeah, it would exactly. be, right? Now, the three one that doesn't make sense to me. I just it's just it just gives you awful loot. It's oh. not like you would. You, it's not like it's gonna be amazing even at that point. But it would no, be no. It's just, but it's useless. Yeah, yeah. How long? How long has it been since breach league? It's Nearly like, two, like years. Three, two. two years. Two. Like two almost years, two years. A little more than two. I haven't used I the breach ring once. Or found a good one actually. I, I've found I found a few really good ones, but they're all only really good when you're doing a breed stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean high chaos res ones are really nice for running. Keywords. Yeah, for Chayola. Other than that, yeah. also I remember back in Breach League, it's like probably totally irrelevant at this point, but black, back in Breach League, people would stack them with like a high rarity roll to MF in breaches. But like oh, mm, that's yeah. not relevant yeah. to the current MFing meta at all anymore. No. I also remember people using ones with stats and then 
when the stats double, they level their like gems <laughs> and then in, like in a bridge. Yeah. And then when it when it like uh, run out, it is like, wait, what the fuck happened? Speaking of here anymore. Speaking of old corrupted jewelry, um, there's a really interesting safe house reward that allows you to replace the implicit of an amulet with a talisman implicit, which yeah, I that's think amazing. is a super clever use of previous league mechanics. I, I really like it. Jorgen, Jorgen by the way. Research, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And the level of Jorgen determines what level of talisman you get. So you can just decide between one, two, and three. Mm. Three being for, for all those softcore MFers out there, the third one can give you 10 quant. And I think also multi, which is pretty good. Or maybe that's yeah. the second. That's second. There's that's also the double crit and multi. There's also the um the uh, damage uh, shift ones and the maximum yeah. life. They're pretty damn good. That's do the second guys, one. Do you guys agree with like Syndicate being the super duper rewarding thing? Because that's kind of how they presented it. It as. is. I don't know if it was on dropped it frames, is. but Chris was saying that like it's just like insanely rewarding, like the most ever. I, mean, just yeah. pure I think it is. <laughs> I don't think it's rewarding in itself. I think it's rewarding when you understand the game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Once you know what you're doing, it's amazing. Um. It's also quite rewarding to people who can take advantage of the various different crafting options that it. Yes. You know, getting like quality on stuff up to a, a really high point because you can put uniques into those quality benches, so you could get like a super quality mm -hmm. disfavor or something. Um, okay. So and just real quick, what do you what do you think? Because that's kind of what I was fishing for. What do you think is the difference between this and why, like, Beast Cherry didn't work? Because this is equally as cryptic unless you have access to the charts. But even if you don't know what you're doing, you can hit the nuts with this league. And Beast Cherry, mm. the, I would say that the, the chart that you can bring up at least has hints, and a lot of those hints are pretty easy to understand. Some of them are very cryptic. Some of them are very weird, but a lot of those hints are something like banking currency. Hoarding. You know that Leo's yeah. going yeah. to give you money when you get Leo into fortification, I think. Um, so there's at least, if you don't want to do research outside of the game, there's at least hints in the game. Whereas bestiary, like, you had to voluntarily go and check your crafting bench and, like, cross-check recipes to make sure you weren't using the wrong beast in the wrong recipe and that sort of thing. It, it was a lot less approachable. That's not to say Syndicate doesn't have his issues, but it's better than Best Jerry. I think the best example of that was end of day one, start of day two. I was like, oh, Gravitius, Div cards, oh, that would be good. And then I got a full Daffer Prodigy. And I was like, oh, six thing. Cool. That that, that was good. He's he's someone I'll keep an eye out for in the future. Yeah. yeah. I've gotten a nice Opal ring like four times. Yeah, yeah I've had that too. So also back, also back to the why it's Oh, feels no, better no. than beast theory is that in beast theory you had a capped amount of beasts yeah. that was mm. very low so you actually ended up not getting the beast that you were netting also then mm. actual netting now you just kill them right and just yep. talk to them and click a couple options and shit drops while with beast you had to like manually do it and yeah, then... speaking of that by the way has anyone found it annoying that uh yes when you kill a beast <laughs> like when you when you kill a beast usually like in the Beastery League, you could net it and then just like overkill it and it would just like insta die. Now you have to wait for the. You have to linger. You have to act... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. And they actually I can kill you while that. Yeah. I've had I've had situations where like I'm zooming ahead and I I'm playing a, a dot build so like the beast will die after I'm a screen and a half away, but Einhar teleports to me because they want him to keep up, so he doesn't net him and then he teleports back to the beast and nets him and then he comes back to me. Is it's weird. It's still preferable to throwing the nets myself, but um, yeah, know, maybe they just definitely. give Einhar a better throwing arm, so no matter where he is, he can hit it with a net. Well, he he doesn't prioritize it. That's the thing. Like sometimes he will just stand next to the mob when you kill it, and he's like bombing somebody in the back, and I'm just like, dude, capture the beast. Like, come on you, already. I just kill it and move on. I feel like it always nets. I don't no, know. he doesn't. There's if you walk away, times... like a screen away from it, he doesn't just he just doesn't net it, and he teleports like Octavian mentioned. So oh. you've probably missed out on a lot of. Um, I might have it. missed out on some. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few times you'll really notice it, especially if you do a lot of like stacking the scarabs. Like if you like really stack like ten plus mm. beasts in one map. If you encounter three beasts in close proximity and you AOE them all down, he'll net one, and the other two are still chilling with like two HP. 
Um, so in that situation, you have you can't run away. You need to wait for him to net all of them, and then you can leave. Um, try that again. I feel like I've netted three at times, and I get like three pop ups in a row. Like I just he, he'll net them away. in like succession, but he won't like AOE really net fast. them all at the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's pretty quick. I don't think the the problem would really show up on a lot of non dot builds where you're like killing the thing while you're next to the yeah. thing, and you're not going to be a screen away while it's dying. But they really pushed dot builds this league. So I mean, this was on my cold snapper. So I mean, uh, okay, really so. Play. Just, just so we go down that rabbit hole, because they kind of mentioned a lot that they're going to be improving incursion, and mm -hmm. I agree with you. What you guys said that incursion works, even though they haven't changed anything. I think it works better than it did in incursion, but they literally have not changed anything. It's when it the gameplay. Yeah. When it when it comes to beast cherry, does it does it work now? Because a lot of the stuff that you guys mentioned now that doesn't work, that didn't work back then, it's still. You know, you still capture your beast, and you don't really know what to do with it. You don't really know which beasts respond to what. Is is beast trade like a thing that is enjoyable? For, for me, me, I mean, for me it was, but it was just... back then as well. So it feels like a bit of an afterthought at times, um, yeah. especially considering that you cannot trade the beasts, right? which means that there's no way to use beast crafting and take advantage of it to try and do some crazy crafting stuff. Like, I want to get back on, provided the recipe still exists, I don't know, I have not found it myself, but provided the recipe still exists to mirror a map, I want to get back on trying to craft the perfect map. I was doing that back in Best Year. it was a lot of fun. I want that to be a, a league goal for me, but if I can't trade for beasts, then that becomes really clunky and difficult to do, and it just, I don't feel any engagement with the system anymore. Did like, they say anything about that? Stuff. Yeah, I thought because that's theory, they also didn't make it tradable from the beginning, right? Yeah. yeah. That was while people were figuring out the system, though. Okay. And since it's, you know, been a league and we've had some best jury content in previous leagues, though not the crafting bench, like maybe I, I could see them justifying not enabling it for a little bit to let people figure out what beasts are worth and what recipes do what. But I would have liked to have heard that maybe in the patch notes. One thing I'm very curious to ask you, Octavian, is. While I like Bestiary now, I do feel like it's lost quite a lot of what made me like it before. Because the thing which I used to really enjoy about was the choice to target farm. And that's completely gone now. And that, I think, is a real shame. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it was a lot of fun as well, digging into the Atlas and figuring out what beasts natively spawned where and hunting those. Um, that's the problem. Like the system's layers of complexity were what made it such a difficult league to integrate into the game in the first place, but were also what made it interesting and distinct from other. So it's kind of hard to know what to cut and what to keep. And I think they pruned it a little bit too much. Um, but like, especially from the point of view of keeping it as a non-tradable resource, because I just never look at my best Jerry bench anymore, because every time I've gone to look at it, it's craft these garbage uniques or get eight mm -hmm. chromatics. And that's yeah. fucking it. Like, I don't have access to any interesting recipes at all. I don't like Einhar as a daily. Me neither. Oh, yeah, I don't... Really uh, he's just... I mean... Yeah. I feel like I feel like Einhar should be more like, we go on a hunt. Right? You talk to Einhar, you have, like, we go on a hunt every day, and you decide where. That could be cool. Like, so, so, so you like, decide... You give Einhar you... a map, and he opens that. Yeah, something like that. I think that's cooler. Or like, and, and then that's the way with like farm beast as well. Like I think less randomness on Einhar and more player kind of decision. And I don't know, maybe I don't know if there's a way that we could somehow decide where we go more rather than he just randomly spawns because then it feels like we're going hunting as well. Yeah, it's been implemented odd, with it seems odd to me that it's just like happening every now and then as well. And then you have the scarab on top as well. I mean, there's plenty of things. I like the scare for him, right? Because then yeah. we can like go on a hunt. That's nice. One thing it's just a lot to always find the scare. I'm not sure if this is me conspiracy theory. They nerf the hell out of the beast drops, right? Because they used to be massive loot pinatas back in Bestiary, but they're not anymore. Uh, Yellow yeah, beasts. They definitely, were, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. Drop, drop less now. I thought that was really disappointing because that was one of the things which, when they crazy buffed, people were like, oh, this is sick. Because when you kill them, you get like huge. I would like to see that come back now. Because then you'd be more it's excited like to run thing, like right? the master missions and stuff. I don't ever see a beast that I'm like, oh, I need to kill this. I I don't really ever have 
a reason for killing beasts other than killing it's a it mob the same way I do for everything else mm -hmm. in the map. Like it doesn't feel like oh, like it, the same problem is there too because we don't really like eventually you learn this, but like for the longest time you don't really know what beasts gives you what. Like because I've played Beast Cherry, I know like oh that spider with the big ass gives me the portal thing, so I'm like oh okay that's cool. But then uh, if you're just killing stuff, then it just doesn't have any excitement, no loot. It's just kind of. I think. One of the ways I would describe Bestiary in its current implementation is like mostly harmless, but not very interesting. Like it yeah, doesn't yeah. actively detract from gameplay, but I don't care about it because I can't mm -hmm. trade for them. So I can't do interesting crafting projects and they don't drop particularly good loot. And the recipes I've gotten are boring. I, I, I is fun and has great yeah. voice lines. He's oh, basically, yeah. he's basically a he's very fun strong box. You're yeah. like, yay, strong box, extra mobs, and it talks to me. That's Einhar currently. Uh, Einhar's amazing. The... I love Einhar. Would you like, there, like there an Einhar still... mission where, say, that you have the beasts being stronger, but you could like decide where they went more? I mean, I think that would be good. Yeah, no, I agree. Like that was the main thing that I I really enjoyed that league was the fact that I could be like, if I want to farm this one thing, I can, I can go and do this thing. And now it's like any agency that was there for the people, especially the people who particularly enjoyed that league, people like Octavian, mm. who was like, I'm going to craft the perfect map. They can't mm. do any more what they enjoyed about that league. So to make it accessible so that everyone likes it, they removed what made it fun for the people who did enjoy it. And that I think is a bit of a shame. The story is oh, basically wow. just like a random, random, unique, some flask suffix crafting and random currency items. With the very, very rare chance to get the uh, the actual beast bosses, but we're already getting the item like items with the crafts from like the uh, aspects from the syndicate. That was what so I wanted not... to ask you. Sure, how... sure, you can still you can still craft it as a one mod yeah. on a, your perfect item. So of course it's good, but they're so rare. And mm. I'm still I'm I'm still assuming the Farrell is probably still like level eighty. Yeah, uh, we've they're... had yeah. one of the Farrell boss fights in my league. We've had one Feral and we've had two Avians across apparently 90 people, realistically 40 people, all playing like in the 90 to 95 range. We've had three bosses. How many bosses have you guys had, if any? We had one and we are playing in a probably Zero. like 10 people. Yeah. I was basically 99 and then got three. To be fair, like, it's. I'm not very representative because I was doing Delve and you yeah. can only have one master in a map. Mm. So every map had Nico. Hmm. How about if uh, there would be some sort of display and like whenever you kill a beast, you would have like whatever percent chance of the beast actually doing the thing that the recipe describes. So if you've got, if it gives you a recipe that you create a random unique staff, then that beast that you're killing will now have like a 50% chance that it's going to drop a random unique staff. And on top of it, you can take it over to your altar and kill it for the 100% chance. Just so, like, you can spice it up a little bit, especially since the loot drops are totally shitty. I, I would say you, like, inject the loot they just drops need to make bit, it, you know? They just need to make it tradable, and then yeah. at that point, it's like, the people who really loved it in the in the past are going to love it again, I think. Yeah, Maybe. it's a much more interesting system if you just add, add trade, because things like imprinting magic items, I know that still exists. You can still split items. You um, can still... I haven't remove right. remove slash add a prefix and suffix yeah. that there's, there's so yeah. many mm -hmm. there's it's so many things, though, amazing no? things in there it's scary. I mean, uh, you could you could say the same thing about the new mastercraft you just get a, a multi you you get a multi multi mod weapon and you can actually slap in five really good uh, yeah. mods mm. on them <laughs> yeah but it's you know you can get a 450 pdps sword but you can't get a 600 you know but with something like this, it definitely helps you getting that six hundred. I mean, it's pretty easy crafting. Yeah, if you, if you know what you're doing. Yeah, I think I think it's a good thing if you know what you're doing. And you if the recipe is really rare and it is super strong and valuable, the economy will correct for that. Like maybe yeah. some of them get sold early for way less than they're worth, but eventually they'll be, you know, like four x a beast or whatever. Okay. One Do thing you rather have the crafting being like a lot more RNG? 
No, I, I agree with you guys. It's just interesting to hear your thoughts. I think yeah. I think it's way better. I think the fact that you can't trade beasts is just really Yeah. That's, that's the huge bottleneck for the whole thing. And then yeah, that the fact that beasts are just not particularly interesting in the map. The loot pinatas were cool. Maybe something more targetable. Again, maybe I would like something that kind of gives you at least an idea that what you captured can be used for a recipe that you might need. So if it drops a staff, you're like, oh, so this thing gives me staves in the future. Okay, well, I'll, I'll look into that. Have um, Octavian, since you do a lot of the beast stuff, have you done any of like the scarab stuff yet? Like you with the beast, mm -hmm. uh, red beasts, and just target farm then at all? I have been doing very little with uh, bestiary scarabs. I've been kind of going through the different systems. I did a bunch with cartography scarabs for a little bit to see how those mm. worked. And then, and then I did delve the last few days. I was going to do probably alpha prophecies next to try target farming alpha rooms and then mm. do bestiary. So I'm like thinking if we do that on like, say a specific map, how strong that would be. Because it gener generates a lot of red beasts, right? Does it give um, you like, I and it gives you Einhar in there as well, like additional red beasts plus Einhar. Yeah, it gives you a guaranteed Einhar mission. All of the masters scarabs give you a guaranteed master uh, mission wherever you run them. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it's like six max, right? Mm. And I thought it was up to four extra red beasts on Gilded, but it might be more. Yeah, I think so. I it's think it's four. Red beasts. Yeah. One um, thing I did want to ask, sorry, just to backtrack a little bit because we briefly touched on crafting. What has been everyone's like favorite crafted mod they've been using since we kind of skipped that entire like aspect of the syndicate reward system? The plus one gems craft on helmet or gloves is really really nice. I got it like pretty early in like Act Five or something, and it just carried me through up until yellow maps. Anything mana plus Chaos damage, rest. mana plus damage taken, Candace mana. Same, yeah, mm, so strong. That's good. Yeah, that's a good one. That's spell damage, and then. Uh... Extra chaos as uh, non chaos. That one's pretty cool too. Speaking of those crafting, uh, actually thinking about target farming specific maps just for the the web div card, which gives you a. Uh, I did that. L yeah, the multi mod weapon. And then just like if I were to get a multi mod, any scepter, that's like basically double the damage as my current like uh, three damage mod scepter I have. I just got a two handed sword. Like it's a pretty common card, so if you actually like target farm it with some quantity, you can you can get a lot of weapons with. And you can also get that in Delve. You can get the multi mod Jordan, yeah. so yeah. you then try and null it down. I've had a few failed like regal and null attempts already. Um, I mean, speaking of crafting, I, there's... do do you guys think it's uh it's intended or is this like just another bug in the sea of bugs where you can actually have a multiple of the same mods or like very similar mods? In an item, for example, you can have the, you can have like uh, spell crit, and then you can have the crit strikes gem on an item now. You can have like, like the stacked Shibram's. mana as well. Yeah, like, you can yeah. Have I, I actually, confusing. Yeah, yeah. I have I have life mana, and then I have the mana plus mana uh, damage taken gain as yeah, mana on a ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can you can have like double crit multi on weapons as well. Yeah. You have the the initial like the normal one, and then you have the one when you are nearby or rare or unique. Just like, Isn't there something where you can craft like percent life with percent mana on yeah, yeah. just pieces yeah. that already have life? Like, yeah. Mana, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty less crazy. A bug and more an overs. Yeah. It wasn't intended. I think it's intended. Think I so? think with fossils. Oh. Like Do you think the so like sixty percent weapon shit was intended as well? Say that again. The like sixty percent weapon shit was intended. I didn't think that was sixty percent. Yeah. Oh, you mean you, mean you craft quality. the quality yeah, you can after the you quality see you, you get the quality first, and then you put the craft on, and it goes all the way up. Oh, I didn't even know about that. That's yeah. a nice way to link your items. Yes. Damn. One thing before we go off it, and I was hoping you were going to mention it, Nagi. There's a certain focus. Oh, well packed. Yeah, but I mean, I, everyone was like talking about their favorite thing. Uh, but yeah, no, there's like focus is really good, by the way. Just, I just, for those who don't think focus is good, focus is crazy. The vault pack one, especially, is crazy. Uh, I, I've been looking into it today. Um, you can get 18% more damage while, or chance to deal, or chance to deal double damage while focused, 18% on shields, for instance, which you can't really craft uh, on a lot of builds like good, just 
good damage rolls on your shield like you get some car speed that mm -hmm. mod in itself is like worth six percent more damage like on average and then you can combine it with the focus i mean you'll have like all these focus mods you're just gonna walk in and, like, and things Dude, what about the 120 percent effect of uh fortify yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> when focus like that, that with the drip the banner yeah 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 <laughs> I was so sad when I tested it. The test focus with temp chains, like self temp chaining with cycles, and it didn't work. Mm. <laughs> so then it, it probably wouldn't work with the Shaper amulet buff then. Shaper's yeah. <gasps> The Shaper amulet is so good. I need yeah, it in my life. We can't just... get one to drop. For okay, anyone for who doesn't know. I need know, to get it. Don't do no, it. No, 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 no. Rise, Rise <laughs> is being punished. For anyone who is playing permanent hardcore, the Shaper amulet, the buff it gives you, makes buffs expire slower on you and that affects flasks makes so effects it's... expire slower which is why it can affect flasks because yeah. flasks are not technically buffs it is ridiculous but also buffs. it's basic isn't yeah. it basically the exact same uh, as the temp chain it's temp, temp chain chains. gloves without having to temp change yeah. yourself yeah. but what's the what's the effect on it like 33 how much slower 33 yeah. yeah oh yeah that's yeah. that's crazy. The buffs are 50 right that's crazy because them chains is like what sixty percent of forty quick mats because you have the reduced effect on players, so you actually have the like curse effect to make. If you've yeah, killed a rare or unique recently, it lasts at ten seconds. So for mapping, it's always active. Mm, okay, it's really strong. Yeah. And it combine gives you that with them temp chains. chains. Yeah. Um, one other. But effect. it's rare. Don't try and farm it. <laughs> it's really rare. Apparently, it's rarer than uh, Starforge, and it drops from Shaper. It's, but, we know, haven't had one drop in our league yet, but we've had everything else drop. How many times did you guys kill it? Uh, I think our main... F See, this is the problem. Our main farm dude stopped farming them because of the bug with Constrictor. If anyone didn't know, there was this really annoying bug with Constrictor early in the league where like it just wouldn't fucking work. So people stopped farming Uber Elder for the first like two or three days. So that slowed people down a lot. But I think we've had... Combined, probably only maybe twenty-ish kills, so not too many. But we've that had everything. Cause, that. Um, that bug would cause Constrictor to crash if you got to five percent HP in certain tile sets. Yep. So I had to get around it by getting Calling Strike, killing him at ten percent. <laughs> um, but one other thing, if we're talking about, it's not really a craft. It's sort of related to the changes. This is this is rather off topic, but. Um, there's some really cool hideout tile sets that are kind of difficult to get that you can find through specific maps. Like the glacier hideout or the glacial hideout looks amazing. And you can only find it in the glacier map and it spawns in like one out of every hundred that you run or something. Fun fact, my Atlas setup this league is based around unlocking hideouts. <laughs> Not even joking. <laughs> Legit, I'm like shaping around one the, hideouts. One of the harder ones to get, I think there's one in Tower, which is, yeah. you know, a natural T15, so that's annoying to get a lot of. The Sunken Temple one looks really cool as well. Where's that one? Uh, it's Sunken from City? The... Yeah. Okay. I didn't get to do any of this stuff yet. Today was my first casual playthrough, <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking forward to exploring all the hideout stuff. But, uh... One thing that we kind of skipped over, so with the inclusion of all the past leagues with Syndicate, how do we feel about the actual gameplay loop of this league? Do we like it, or do we feel like we're spread too thin i like it personally i mean you are spread really thin but i really but it's more about you have to make a choice and that is good because yeah. i felt like in a lot of leagues in the past the choice was forced upon you it's like this is how we play it in delve like not delve incursion especially like we're doing the temples and then we're doing the temples and then once the temple hype is over it's like god this is boring but now there's like so like I think by the end of the league, I won't be done with it. Like even even after the three four months, I still won't be done with it. But it's a lot so of the much. a lot of the stuff's going core though. Like the master changes are yeah, going it's core. Good. So you'll have more than a league maybe for something. Yeah, yeah. Like no, maybe yeah, Syndicate yeah. won't, but no, no. I'm just I'm just saying like as a whole, like the game as a whole now has evolved yeah. to this state where it's like you kind of oh, like yeah. choose your own adventure, and it's like really great. It's a good problem to have. Yes. To, to want to play more content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very I, good. I can't remember if it was last night or the night before. I accidentally streamed for an extra hour and a half because I'm like, I'm going to log off once I finish this. The problem is, is it kept <laughs> procking other things. 
So it's like, oh, I've Beautiful. now got Alva spawn. I'll now run the temple. And then, okay, I've now just quickly did this master mission. Shit, that propped my syndicate. Did the syndicate. Oh, that propped my mastermind. And it just, it wouldn't end. And it was so perfect. I'm like, this is what I wanted. It's so good. It's It, it really is so good. Like, yeah. I am so much happier with like even the push to 100 because you get to do different freaking things and it's not just sitting in your hideout rolling 100 maps and then spamming them. It's like sometimes, even if you clear really fast, you're going to spend 20 minutes in a map because you're doing like 10 different things. It's like, that's so cool. But Rice, shouldn't you just be delving though? Uh, screw it, dude. I've been, del <laughs> I've been delving enough, but yeah, I should. Or the pure breach stones in a trade league. Yeah, I that too. That's the thing. Were you, were you guys surprised? I was I was a little bit surprised that uh, you get XP from the betrayals. From, you like, get the quite a lot of XP when you execute them and stuff. It's like a nice little chunk. Yeah. You get a lot. Yeah. Like, uh, even I think at, they just didn't uh, want people skipping them. A lot. Like, they want people interacting with the system. And they made it really difficult. Like, they're they're the most challenging enemies in the map by far. Which feels a little awkward in some maps. You know, the boss just falls over in three hits and the Syndicate guys don't. Um, but yeah, they just didn't want people skipping them, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised though because they never took this approach where they would outright just give people XP for it. I mean, it's not conveyed very well. I wish they actually told you that you get XP or there was like a little pop-up or something, anything. But you get quite a bit. Like even at 98, I was getting like... 250k if I killed like three mm. people or something. That's that's a lot. That's like one third of a map. Yeah. Like a high map, <laughs> so, like T15, <laughs> T16. Yeah. Mm. I would regularly notice leveling up upon like finishing syndicate events and stuff. Um, one yeah. thing I wanted to ask though, because we, we sort of touched on it but skipped over it. With the difficulty level, it's good that it's killing you. Like it's good that players are dying, right? Yes. Yeah. It's um, it's good that there's challenging content that forces more well-rounded builds. It's bad when those deaths happen so suddenly to things that are difficult to see that people don't know what to fix. I agree. Or how to approach yeah. it better next time. That was the problem with Invasion, really, where a lot of people compared this league to Invasion as this, like, imminent pending doom, someone in your map and you're constantly on the lookout, like, what's going <laughs> to fuck me next? And that was definitely the case in Invasion. And typically it would be like an off-screen one-shot from something somewhere and you had no idea what happened. And while though this happens sometimes with syndicates and, uh, you know, not everything is super well explained, uh, it's definitely a lot better. And it does kind of work with what PoE, in my opinion, does really well, especially compared to other ARPGs, is that it's not... Like, bosses have mechanics, like things you actually have to dodge inside of a map and i think that's like really good that they're moving out outside of the boss rooms because i was i was quite sad when they did that when they did the whole change where 99 percent of the bosses of maps are inside of a boss room mm. everything used to roam a lot more and that always felt like it kind of like they've really separated the mechanical game of like bossing from everything else in the whole game so for this to be like widely available, I like that quite a bit, if done well, which it isn't. In my I opinion. like. I like. But maybe the fact I just don't get it yet. Yeah, I like the fact that whenever I open a map, I have like this attention. I'm just like waiting to fight the syndicate <laughs> so that I can relax rest of the map. Yeah. That's just that's exactly that's a, that invasion yeah, feeling. Yeah. 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 It's amazing though. Like it, it's so great. Yeah. Um. I always say, I don't know if you guys would agree with this, if I had the choice of two, where like the game feels either too easy or too hard, always too hard. Yeah. Because you're actually engaging mm -hmm. and you're like, yes. And that's like, that was the one thing which I find a little bit weird about this league, is I can understand a lot of traditionally softcore players complain about this league, but I'm a little bit surprised by the amount of like my super old school hardcore friends who bitch about this league. Because we went so long, we went so, so long going, oh, the game's too easy, oh, the game's too easy, oh, the game's too easy. And now it's like old school incursion, like, ooh, guys, this is, uh, I'm skipping it, I'm not engaging with it, it's bullshit. And it's like, come on, dude. Well, you asked earlier, uh, and we kind of did an answer, whether or not we're going to, th we, we think that it's going to get nerfed. 
Because we never answered that. Do you think that it's going to get nerfed, Taki? Okay, little insider info, which I've mentioned a few times now. Oh. I... So because that video made, I mentioned, like, the QA team agreed with it. I asked early on, like, does the team know if it's being nerfed or not? And every time I've asked, I've gotten really coy answers, like, I'm not part of that discussion. So I don't think they've decided yet. Mm. I think they will probably cave to, like... Really? At yeah. this point, it's been a week. You, it's, you have to remember, a lot of a lot of people, it's like, it's their, like, time off. Like, this is their own skeleton crew. Mm -hmm. like, on the topic of dealing with the syndicate, for anyone who is having difficulties, multiple totems support decoy totem is amazing. Mm -hmm. You should, should give that a go. Cast some damage taking offering if you're not a corpse construction build is actually very helpful for all mm -hmm. the uh, corpse consumption effects. Oh, actually, on that topic, the um, the new chess piece from from uh, the mastermind fight is really actually. Um, yeah. I'm considering using it in my next build. It's the queen sacrifice. It gives percent life, and I think it's every five seconds it just automatically casts an offering, and your offerings affect you at 25 percent reduced effectiveness. So only offerings casted by the chess piece, yeah. not generically casted ones. There's also um, the and helm. Then it has two veiled mods. Yeah. There's also the helm, which uh, heals you for up to four thousand life energy shield and two thousand mana every five seconds as well. I was I was gonna do a snake pit unearth build because you can make unearth chain now with snake pit, which is a little dumb. And then it generates corpses for the chess piece. Yeah. And sorry, I derailed it a bit. We were talking about syndicate. But yeah, I I. I... I think it will get nerfed, but I hope it doesn't, and I don't think they've decided yet. I think oh, this is one of those situations where, like, in the team, there are two camps. There's the one camp, like, this is good, and there's the other camp saying we need to change. Because if you remember, when we had Jonathan on the last Baycast, he explicitly said, we balance the game around softcore, and the hardcore players have to put up with it. And we all went, good. We all were like, yeah, I mm -hmm. agree. And I think that they want softcore players to die. And I think it's good for softcore players to die. So the fact there's yeah, content probably. which is this challenging, which can kill you, that's good. Yeah. yeah. I I I don't I hope they don't nerf them overall. I can see like the like the Torah and it that fled a bit, but other than that, I think I hope that they don't nerf it, but I think they're gonna nerf it. I think there's been so much. There's been so many people uh, I think complaining they're... about the the damage they do. I think the betrayal dudes themselves um, are, in most cases, fine. There's like a, I mean, maybe like it that fled, but I think that's more about a a showing how it's more like the visuals, right? Like, when am I getting hit by this mechanic? I think that's the problem. Not really so much the damage, because you can mitigate that. I mean, there's so many ways you can craft things now as well. So, um, I think the only the, the thing I have the most of an issue with is actually all the random crap that spawns alongside them yeah. and the way they teleport back. God, that annoys me. Like, you will have them like chase you, like, poof. Oh, I'm back here now. What? And it's with a totem that heals them to full too. It's like yeah, um... it's just this like this like random teleport mechanic when you're dragging them away and trying to place them. Then just have a leash of how long, like how far they can go, mm. right? Yeah. And have like turn around and go back instead. Yeah, of... this like teleportation it's, it's, crap is so annoying. It's really annoying if you're playing like a totem build or playing something like Vortex where your damage is area based. Like I'm doing damage a lot of it in this area, but if they leave, I'm doing nothing. If they just teleport off that, that's really frustrating on that note octavian so the two builds i've played this league i least started on the vortex uh build and now i'm playing ignite fireball the vortex build does like double the damage of ignite fireball ignite fireball feels so much better because once i've ignited the dude that's it the damage is on him and i can peace out like that difference in the even though it's the exact same kind of build and i've got like half of the path of building of a vortex build it feels so much better Except for brand. when I accidentally roll 90% avoidance map for anyone who saw <laughs> that part of my uh, stream while we were waiting to set up the podcast. But, uh, yeah. Hmm. Brands work basically similarly to that. Like Rai said earlier, mm -hmm. there's, they feel sort of like a dot build. They seem very well suited to the content that were introduced alongside, which maybe isn't a coincidence. 
I'm play I'm gonna play a dot build now, but a big part of why I kinda held back on very having very strong feelings on how uh betrayal is and why so many people struggle with it is because yeah, I kind of felt like brands were cheating in a way. Uh and I'm sure that people who have to stand around and don't have as much opportunity to actually mm -hmm. like run around and understand the fight will struggle quite a bit. But I mean the thing is that ev this happened every single time. Like when Dominus got released, people didn't understand mechanics, they died. But eventually GGG caved in. Same thing for Malachi. I think it took them longer that time around with Malachi of people yeah. complaining, but eventually they caved in too. And uh, in hindsight, uh, it was a mistake, right? Like nobody really was happy with, with that change uh, eventually. So... It, if a week went by and people seem to complain less and less, maybe the ones who complained the most already quit. Uh, GCC is the ones who has, who has those numbers. I don't know. I feel like they might uh, just like kind of not do anything about it with maybe a little bit of a counter. But personally, I would love for them not to change things and to give us an opportunity to really experience this, even if it's for a little bit longer, an experiment with different characters and whatnot. I, I mean, think I would rather talk about the ch like keeping the challenge rather because we always end up in this like discussion where it's like either we nerf them or they stay the same. Mm -hmm. And instead of like talking about well how what is wrong with them and we fix that rather than making them because they could be equally challenging yeah. by by like baby me like making the fight clearer. Yeah, no the the visual the visuals in this game are like one of the biggest things that. I think that's why it's particularly hard with these guys, because most of the challenge is based in being able to read the fights, and until Path of Exile fundamentally changes how they visually deliver damage to the player, that's very hard to work around. It's like a... impossible. <laughs> <laughs> like, how can you... Like, I was thinking about that the other day, like... Uh... And kind of what you mentioned before, Tarki, it's like, how can you do that? You know, there's a reason why things are blue on blue on blue on blue and red on red on red on red is because if you mix and match these things, it's just the entire game is always going to be an absolute mm -hmm. clusterfuck. Yeah. So it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of too late, you know? <laughs> People are always excited, blue league, yellow league, whatever. Well, now we've got a rainbow game. And so, yeah. And especially when... Exiles and everything are using like MTX skills too. Yeah. So it's just like you don't even even if you like you're used to seeing like something like blade fall, you know, it's physical damage with green, and then you suddenly get the cold of one, for example, with like so like Yeah. And there's not necessarily always a correlation between how flashy and um apparent something is and how dangerous like in Delve in particular, that was a problem where the corpse explosions from the Waitas are really Kind of difficult to see unless you know what to look for, but the giant spirit bombs from whatever they're called, the the creatures that can just off screen you with those, those will tickle you maybe, unless you're in really deep dells, or like in a zone with you know crit. They're called gorgols, dude. Get her back. I, Come on. I, my apologies, guys. You yeah. are the superior gamer. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I I think they're just kind of yeah they can't really do a whole lot. They can make things bigger. I mean, yeah, I think that would be good. <laughs> that would they could help. make um, the things like Haku Slam even more deadly and slower. It's really slow. I don't think people realize how slow the thing is. He has like a huge wind up. Yep. Uh, and then boom. It's incredibly slow with It's really slow. I think a lot of people get confused by the fact that he slams twice because he goes boom and then goes boom again instantly. And so a lot of people get freaked out about that. That looks like it's instantaneous, but it's really not. He winds up for a long time. Mm. I would recommend that everyone who's struggling play a hasted league for a few months because you like oh, yeah. you automatically get used to it. Like it sounds stupid, but because I, I did the whole last month of Delve on a hasted league and I went into this with a hasted league. And two months in, this is gonna run out. So I'm gonna go back into like the core game. And it's like you've basically gained global temp chains. So what you're saying is the game is pay to win now? Yeah. Sort of. No, but <laughs> genuinely, this is we touched about this in the last one. My game experience is fundamentally better than everyone else's because phased bosses are better for me.
because they're affected by haste. My phased boss fights aren't that bad compared to your phased boss fights because my bosses are faster. And it's not even a joke, it's true. Because they rotate the phases faster. It's genuinely a more enjoyable experience. I think I said that I think I said that in the last phase. Yeah, Carl talked about it. It's true. This is doses. Yeah, yeah. If you if you do frenzy plus fleet and then you put the uh the vessel on a desert osis, there's no phases. The boss just like teleports through. Tight. Your face is fixed. It's gonna kill you, but tight. <laughs> jokes, jokes aside, I mean, I Minor do downside. agree. After playing private leagues, the game definitely feels like it's like in, sl in slow motion almost. And you always have an opportunity. But I mean, we've played for a long time, right? So that's the that was the yeah. thing about Armageddon brand, for instance, for me, that Armabe Armageddon brand is a fucking clusterfuck. You cannot see oh. anything on the screen. I don't think there's anything in the game that just and like the worst part is that it scales incredibly well with cast speed, so you want as much as humanly possible, so it gets even worse and worse and worse. And so, uh, people would ask me all the time, like, how do I see anything? And I see the mobs before I engage them, and I know what the mobs do. Therefore, I can like expect things even if I don't perfectly see them. But then that was the reason why I wasn't doing betrayals because even if I saw the mob, I wouldn't know what the hell they were doing, right? Mm. And for somebody who, you know, hasn't played for a long time, they have that, but 24-7. Yep. So it's like, you have, mean, to, you have to balance the game around these players to a certain extent, obviously. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't get, you, your game isn't growing and everything goes to shit. So you have to balance around them at this, uh, to a certain point. But then you've also got people who play this game for 10,000 hours, and you kind of want to balance around them too to keep them around. So. And it's it's partly the fault for a lot of players who haven't been longer time players of the game, not just of Syndicate as a league, but of the expansion as a whole, bringing so much content into the game all at once. Like previously, it was pretty yeah. unlikely to have a lot of layering of, of content in a map unless you were investing, which a newer player wouldn't do as often. But now it's perfectly possible that Al can go on a map and have a Syndicate intervention happen while you're in a breach next to a Red Beast. If you're a newer player, you don't know what the fuck is going on. You're dead. You're just dead. And Einhar is talking over your corpse about beasts or something. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So, it sounds like... Is that like... that bad, though? I mean, I, I know, I mean, there's a bit... I, there is <laughs> there is bad... Like, there is something bad with, with clutter. But getting overwhelmed as a new player, like... It, isn't that just the natural, like progression of any poe player though see but that's the thing that's the thing that i love about poe because in other games the developers instantly go oh oh no we can't be having this yeah. this this player is frustrated this didn't go well for him he must have the best experience yeah. but in poe it's kind of like i oh, fucking deal with it pussy you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they, then they throw up it more just, i don't, just yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we but have like, to do away the perfect with reaction the i don't think we have to do away with that sort of stuff in the process of making it easier to understand and easier to you know yeah, yeah. play basically yeah. like it's about the middle ground yeah I like think. i don't want to remove bestiary i don't want to limit the number of mechanics that can spawn in a map in some way i want both worlds please can mm -hmm. i have my cake and also eat it basically yeah, i'm asking leaf. for the impossible because i don't have to do it <laughs> yeah. I think we I think can... that's why private leagues happened, honestly, because GGG wanted to give people like a way to play the game the way they want without imp impacting the experience of uh, like new people getting introduced to the game and mm -hmm. whatnot. I think what you need to remember as well, and uh, Chris touched on this when he was on Drop Frames, and Jonathan touched on this when he was on Bay Class, is the fact that they seem to have come to the decision that it's not worth their time and investment to try and. Like they, they said directly that the stats went and it didn't matter how much they improved the early game, the same amount of drop off. So I feel like at this point they seem to have abandoned that entire notion. I mean, who's going to preach about your game the most in general? Like in the gaming community, I feel like uh, PoE has turned basically from the game that nobody wanted to play because desync, and that was the word that people would always spread into. Mm -hmm oh, this is a better D3, it's a little bit different, to eventually now just everybody saying it's a good game. But the people who talk about your game and the people who introduce it to you other players aren't the new guys who 
barely just now started playing. Maybe to like close friends, maybe family, right? But not in general. But these people who have played for a long time and they sit in other people's chats and whatnot on streams and they talk about it, those are really the people that you want to be investing your shit into. So I can I can totally see that working out for them. I think it's the better approach too, long term. Um, since we've kind of talked everything in a very sort of round the house way, is there any like individual topic that you guys really want to talk about? You feel like we skipped over, uh, or like any soapboxy stuff you want to mention? Mm -hmm. uh, I am a little miffed by um. The fact that the mastermind boss fight will reset your whole syndicate chart and it doesn't tell you that beforehand once you finish the mastermind boss fight because i did that with another safe house that i wanted to run afterwards ready and i just lost that safe mm. house and all the investment into it um so yeah fair warning to anyone in chat don't run your minor safe houses before the mastermind or you lose your minor safe houses I mean, it, it, it makes sense thematically right Take yeah it does off. And I could have, yeah. you know, thought it through a little more and maybe <laughs> realized that. But it would have been nice to have a warning in game or something. I don't know how they would communicate that, but I'm just salty. It's a very yeah. punishing system as well because if you fail it, it resets. And it's like most people finish it by around like 90-ish, as far as I'm aware. I opened the map once and then I just didn't walk in. And it was like, nothing happened. It just it reset my it reset my mastermind. I misclicked the top one instead. Oh. I just didn't do anything. I got just ignored it then, and then went on my way, and then nothing nothing changed. <laughs> and that thematically makes sense too. You walk into the building, you look around, everybody looks at you, surprised, and you walk out, and nobody reacts. I mean, that makes sense too. I think it ends up. That was all though. That was the last soapbox to stand on for me. I think I mean I can I can cry about how brands are literally the best design in the entirety of Path of Exile forever and ever. And everybody oh, should play them. We can quickly touch about what do we think about instant cast skills? Recall yeah. and vortex in general, like it's the like shit. It. With, with a cooldown. Like for so long people were like, no, we don't want cooldowns. No no D3 in my game. And now it's like Vortex and Brand. And I feel like those are some of the greatest additions they've made to the game in a long time dear god I, I i never fucking understood why people didn't want cooldowns and rotations and just wanted this like one click play style especially when vol skills were like really working well mm -hmm. it was so weird to me but yeah well, I, now I we've got works, right now we've got pseudo cooldowns with fall skills and we've got focus added to the game and a few mm -hmm. cooldown skills mostly utility ones but one damage mm -hmm. one with vortex um are there any other instant damage skills i don't think there are I think it's just vortex technically molten shell well True. recall is technically instant damage because it procs the yeah, four <laughs> you would never really use it when you don't have brands out so it's it's damage in a way it's not directly it's like a combo itself, thing right yeah yeah you always um, have brands but yeah, yeah we've uh we've seen a growth of a lot of cooldown skills into the game which is cool and also more means to scale cooldown recovery it's a syndicate craft now so it's not just on shaper items Thing that's cool about cooldowns and i think brands really displayed this well that uh self-cast abilities can work despite the fact that like scaling should be technically a lot easier with totems and and mines and traps and all this sort of stuff mm -hmm. and like showcasing with brands that this this stuff can work and it doesn't need to be balanced around like all three archetypes i think that's really something that i hope they continue to uh, expand upon because god derm is a good it's really nice it feels really good for somebody in my chat to be like i'm playing armageddon brand totem hierophant and it's really good and i'm like yeah drop the fucking totem and you'll see yeah. how good it really is <laughs> and he's like no i think it's way better like this and then he eventually drops the totem and says that it's like 20 times better oh it feels so good man jeez my okay. next build, once I'm done with my Ignite character, is a Storm brand. Because even though I dropped Armageddon brand because it was clunky, brands are the most fun I've had. Like, actually playing a build in such a long time, I'm like, I want to play more brand builds. So, yeah. Dude, if you... Storm brand is... Like, Armageddon's got the oomph, yeah. but Storm brand is really where it's at in terms of gameplay. 
like yeah again it's that it's that i can't wait for a cold brand because that's really going to be my locust swarm thing but like in a way i didn't realize this initially but to anybody that's played d3 the locust swarm jade harvest thing was actually such a cool concept and it's finally in poe because it's literally exactly that where you dot up the guys and then you release like your stored up dots in like a big explosion and that's what brands are with brand recall and just scaling that down is super duper cool yeah i don't know it, it's it's really amazing one thing i do also want to touch on a little bit um i'm also really hyped to play winter orb for a really dumb reason uh my friend was playing it and we were unlocking our atlas and we ran a cells map and he killed everything in all the doors mm. running in a straight line i saw that and thought I'm going to play that build at some point. When you have a build which makes you want to run the maps you never want to run, that's, that's good, good design. That's really good design. I got an even dumber reason for wanting to play Winter Orb. <laughs> it's not wanna, a competition, right? I want to <laughs> put the decay on it so that it turns into chaos, and then I want to call the build Chaos Orb. No, I was gonna do. I was gonna remake the Decay Blade Vortex oh. character, but I was gonna use Winter Orb instead of Blade Vortex. That's what I wanted to do, but then I was uh. like, oh, you gotta get the MP and stuff. Uh. I wanted to do that, but yeah, you don't do that. I do that first, man. Then you can you can copy me, like always. Hey, I'm I'm, I'm loving Vol Fireball. So you just play it while I'm still playing my Fireball character. You got it. You got it. It's fine. <laughs> I just want to do Winter Orb like with... tomorrow, so yeah. I got you covered. You know, I'll, I'll I just want to do Winter Orb with Max uh, Curse Effect Temp Chains, so I just get the uh, get the damage, and then I get the increased duration version. Do it once, and then run through a long map, never needing to do anything else. Yes, <laughs> just because of the duration. Yeah. That's another yeah. thing which makes that amulet we talked about earlier even better because that that buffs Winter Orb. Because that's an effect on you, so it, it scales like the duration of that. People want melee. Listen, we were gonna talk about melee, and Al Kaiser was gonna be the special guest, but he talked shit about me, oh. so I had to ban him. So now we can't, we can't do the melee talk. Uh, Al Kaiser viewers, again, that was not a Bay class sanctioned comment. That was directed entirely from Rise QT. So please execute him, not me. Um, but well none of us really play melee much in general i i'm genuinely interested uh, as far to as play I know, the... Al is literally the only person as what? i've been hearing over the last day yo right go to my youtube i literally okay melee. if you talk about this league I or melee. general no Are, he's literally the in only general one. you said in I, general i, I like literally killed two on the last league with the blade for it dude what the fuck no you didn't do that I didn't Wait. play Grand Slam, I didn't play Thunder, <laughs> I didn't play Lightning Strike, or Frostblades, none of that shit. Cleave, no, fuck that. Reeve never played that. It's only on Kaiser, dude. So we can't have a melee discussion. None of us are uh, really special. Am I, am I like... Am I like <laughs> sending a bit of sarcasm here? No. Maybe. I mean... I guess smell it. I think he might still be slightly upset about his pre-pot. I think that might be, might be what happened here. I'm just saying we're not fucking qualified, okay? You're not well equipped enough to have this intellectual conversation about melee. Jesus. But that sounds better. That, that, that's how you should have said it from the beginning. We're just not qualified. That doesn't mean that we, don't, we can play it and still not be qualified. I mean, okay. Right. right. To, 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 squish, to, to squish this before it turns into a way too elaborate rant. Have we actually covered everything that we would like to talk about? All good. All good. Okay. What I say is we will be back in two weeks' time, and at that point, we'll have all really learned how Syndicate works, and I'm incredibly curious to either praise or complain about how GGG handles the balance of Syndicate in two weeks, because they will definitely have changed something by then. I think it might, might be one of those, man, where they're just, like, gonna be like, uh, nope. I think it I think really depends gonna... on the numbers. I think if people keep playing, then they won't change it. But then if they They're gonna go full incursion. They're gonna add, like, two completely useless uh, syndicate members <laughs> and just leave it at. That's a lot of voice acting that... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I heard I heard that the mastermind fight doesn't have voice acting, so 
It does. Or does it? It does. It, it somebody somebody said that there's like. Okay, in that case, yeah. Maybe they have. Maybe they have some in, something in store so they can tell us that they're adding new stuff mid league, but they already did it beforehand and then just adding it mid league, so that it feels like they added something, even though they had it done before. Okay, so quickly to end this new rant. Briefly, yes, no, if you think there'll be changes, so then next week we can be like, yeah, I got it right. I think, yes, there'll be nerfs. I don't want them, though. Rise. Yes, but I hope not. Octavian. Uh, I think changes, but maybe not too severe. Noogie. I don't think big nerfs. I think it's going to be mainly bug fixes. Carl. Bug fixes. Uh, maybe nerfed a few of them, but nothing else. Yeah. And Janice is not getting changed, okay, Chad? Fuck off. It's not getting changed. And on that night, we will see you all again in two weeks' time. Have a good day. Bye bye. Give us more keybinds. Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah.